to rethink, think outside the box. If possible, think without the box. New innovations. Look at what is going on in Argentina and other countries. It was, it was um, 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 one great philosopher who said, if you continue to do things using the same methods by which you did them before, only a madman will do that. You, so this government cannot think that she may removal of oil subsidy was the magical one we were looking for. And I knew it would not work. By the way, what is this oil subsidy? Because I see here some people again say the government has to remove oil subsidy. So when will this subsidy re be removed finally? What is this subsidy? When does this stop? Why are we operating cloud case economy? What he called the disarticulate economy of consuming what we do not produce and producing what we do not consume. That is what is going on. So what is this subsidy? When is it going to stop? What are the priorities? What are the measures to cushion the effect? None in place. That is what I mean by government going back to the drawing board. They, they wanted to come to power. The people have given them power, but the people are now the ones demonstrating because they are hungry. And I was shocked to hear one government official saying uh, this, these spontaneous demonstrations were sponsored. Sponsored by who? Do you think hunger knows politics? Hunger does not understand APC or PDP or Labour Party. Hunger is neither Fulani nor Hausa nor Edo nor, nor Igbo nor Yoruba. Hunger does not have color. Hunger is hunger. And a hungry man is an angry man. And that is why these spontaneous demonstrations are coming up from Ibadan to Shogbo, from Kano to Sekoto, from Aba to Wiri, from Bini to Enugu, from Potako to Kalaba. And you are saying these are sponsored? Hello? When the house is on fire, the blind we know because they will feel it. The lame we know because they will hear about it. The dumb, we know, because they will feel the heat. Things are bad, bad, let me, bad. Yeah. And it has never been so bad. Yeah. Uh, so let's not pretend. Yeah, let us Please, for God's sake. Yeah. Let me tell yeah. you quickly, because one of the major reasons why I invited you, uh, I mean, this is just coincidence that this is happening today. Uh, one of the reasons why I spoke with you over the weekend is the worry and concern of the senior member of the bar. And as a very senior member of the inner bar, uh, you are also worried when we had the conversation about what is going on in Oshun State. The judiciary has been on vacation, not a voluntary vacation. Okay, I'm going to stop it right there so we can move on quickly. You remember we reported yesterday over Tenubu's trip to Qatar with his two sons. So uh, Arise uh, Ojo may have this to say concerning this. Thank you. We'll take another story. The senior special assistant to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on digital and new media, Otega Ogra, has defended the president's inclusion of his sons, Shei and Yinka, among the delegation, going with him to Qatar for a business and investment meeting. The list of delegates began circulating on social media on Tuesday in the wake of the president's directive to implement the Orosaye report to cut the cost of governors. Ogra, in a bid to defend the inclusion of the president's family among the delegates going to Qatar, said that some world leaders take their children on state visits to educate them about world affairs and different cultures and to maintain a semblance of family life despite the demands of public office. His tweet reads, It is not uncommon for children of world leaders to accompany their parents on foreign trips. In fact, it is the norm. Canadian PM Trudeau is known to travel with his family on official trips abroad. Same with UK PMs, even if somewhat muted. From the public image and diplomacy angle, bringing family members can soften a leader's public image and aid in diplomatic relations by showcasing a relatable, family-oriented side. For some leaders, taking their children on such trips is a way of educating them about world affairs 
and different cultures. Others do it to maintain some semblance of family life, despite the demands of public office and for security considerations. The Obamas, Clintons, Bushes, Trumps, and others went on tons of foreign trips while in office with their families. We really need to stop majoring in minors in the name of castigating everything. Okay. You guys can see that comparison right there, the names that he mentioned. The Obamas, Clintons, Bush, Trumps, and others went on tons of foreign trees while in office. But you are doing the comparison with a country where the citizens are languishing away in hunger. <laughs> you see, some people talk right without not thinking. It is strange. Let's move on. Hashtag Nigeria will succeed. Obviously, Nigeria will succeed. But you know that a lot of Nigerians have always talked about cutting cost of governors, even just in the wake of the Orosaye report. And the fact that, you know, um, I believe it was COP28, that whole nonsense about the, uh, the huge delegation came up. Well, let me take a reaction. This person wrote, Lagos has always been a family business. And now Nigeria is going to be a family business too. The oppressed are the ones defending them. As Nigerians are bleeding, Nigerian politicians in their various positions are still living in luxuries, living large on their bogus salaries, compensations, allowances, loots and other benefits. They'll come online to give out sweet interviews and talks and then go back to their presidential villa to dine and wine. Nigerian people are none of their business. They are in politics to steal billions and enjoy the best things of life, while Nigerian people live in hunger, poverty, and misery on a daily basis. I see you nodding. Um, Ayo, obviously, you know that that's the rhetoric online because of what we've been talking about. Yeah. Okay, so whenever we want to compare um, the economy of countries, and we use the UK, France, America as an example, they will say, oh, don't <laughs> compare apples and oranges. Don't, oh, they are two different realities. Right. It's unfair to compare. However, when it fits the narrative, as we've seen with that um, statement, then it would say, oh, look at America, US, and France, the same people. And, and I'm bringing that again, apples and oranges. Look at the size. Is America or is France going through the same thing that we are in terms of the economic realities of Nigeria? Absolutely not. Are they calling for a, a, stream, a streamlining or a cut in governance, in cost of governance? Not no. at the moment. Right. So you cannot use that example with due respect to Mr. Ortega, saying that I, I do agree that, yes, you, if for educational purposes or to expose your children or to present a sense of family, family life, if that were the case, they should take the wife, grandparents, everybody, just to show that he's a family man. But if the state is sponsoring this at a time when we have just had head lines around the implementation of the Ronsai report, I believe that even for the optics, if you're not paying out of pocket, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't know if the, it's, the, it's the states that sponsoring their trip. I want to assume that's the case. If that's the case, just because of what you keep asking Nigerians to make sacrifices to tighten their belts, then let us see that reflected mm -hmm. in the, you know, in, in, the, in the spendings of the government. Right. Saying that, Mr. Ortega himself, we question the jobs of the SSAs and retinues of essays on uh, media that the president has. Some of them need to go. I'm not, I mean, I want him to keep his job, but I'm just saying that we have so many. So, like I said, they are coming on Twitter, they are coming and just commenting on every single they need to show their story. They need to show working. So, this is what we see. But yeah. I think for the optics and in line okay. and in accordance with what the president okay. has said, let's stop all these trips for now. You see that statement from Rufai? They need to show they are working. It means that, you know, because you pay these people to do their job. That's why you see some of these satanic people come to our platform sometimes to try to disrupt this media here. You know, because that's their job. They, they, they were paid that, okay, these people now go quickly, go inside, go inside, go scatter everything. So when they come in, they, they try to do their job. So that's what Rufai just confirmed that they need to show they are working. As we see all those satanic people that comes here, when you are talking left, they go right. They are not interested. Now you guys can understand. Saying that other world leaders travel with their family, the question to ask is, those family members that go with them, do they pay from their pockets or are they following family, you know, uh, their father at state expense? Now, if you check in many, many other countries, you see that oftentimes, you know, 
the uh, presidents of those countries pay from their pockets uh, if they have to go in terms of maintenance and all of that. You, you are citing the example of America, where in fact you can't you can't eat anyhow at state expense <laughs> in the, in the White House. Otherwise, you have to pay. I'm, yeah, as uh, Mrs. Yeah. Obama pointed out. Now, in any case, there's also the famous example of uh, Namibia, COP28 that you mentioned in December 2023. Uh, President uh, He Gengob, now, so now of blessed <laughs> memory, <laughs> he traveled to Dubai with six members of his family. Yes, there, there was, was outreach. Right. On, uh, in Namibia. Namibia Twitter was exploded because people were saying, how can the president travel with his wife and then go with four children? Mm -hmm. The president's defense is that they had been planning vacation and that, you know, uh, members of his family were not sponsored by the state. So the question here is, who is paying for Shiyi Tinubu and Yenka Tinubu? Are they going there as uh, business investors? <laughs> because the, the trip to Qatar is about uh, investment. Yeah. So what business do they do? Because if they are investors, if they had one big company and they are also going to go there and help Nigeria achieve the objectives of uh, foreign direct investment, then of course you cannot question it because they will then be bona fide qualified to be on that trip. But if they are just going because they are daddy's sons, yeah. then Nigerians have every reason to say what is their role there. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, in January, President Tinubu gave a directive that he was uh, reducing presidential entourage yeah. uh, uh, to, for local and international travels. Now, what was assigned to the president then was an entourage of 20 for international travels, right? I think yeah. about 20 for international travels. There is a list that is circulating yes. of main body. Main body means the team that goes with the uh, president. Yeah. Now, the, that list is in two parts. Some people will travel on the 28th. It's an advanced team of about uh, 22, 20 oh, yeah, something people. Then you have the main body, the other main body that will travel with the president on the 29th. Those ones, I think they are about 28. Yes. Now, if you add the figure, then you raise the question, is the president violating his own directive? Yeah. Is he leading by example with regard to presidential entourage? Yeah. We will expect an explanation in that regard. The third point to be, to be made about the trip to Qatar is that there was uh, some controversy about the note verbal yeah. that came from uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, yeah. Qatar, flying around all over the place, you know. And then uh, there was a counter, there was another note verbal when it became controversial that the business summit that the Qataris had said would not take place because of other commitments had now been uh, allowed. But the point I want to make there is not about the diplomacy. You can exchange no verbal, aid mamoir, bois du papier, you know, as they call it in uh, diplomacy. The issue is about government documents flying about. This is my question. Uh, what is going on? It's in the, like in the, uh, in the and rules and, 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 and uh, guidelines for yeah. civil servants, right. there is nowhere that civil servants are allowed to be carrying sensitive yeah. government document right. and giving it to the media or distributing yeah. it on, on, on social, social media. In 2011, we had the Freedom of Information Act. Mm -hmm. If you want to access information, the Freedom of Information Law applies procedures by which you can access government doc documents. And there are exemptions provided for in that same law. But this one that everywhere is just porous. <laughs> that every department of government, they have turned the government documents into something that just goes around. Yeah, but I wasn't there it, a, a it, warning. There was a warning that was released by the president. That they by, by, the office, that. Yes. by the office of the right. head of service. Right. It was leaked as well. Right. Yes, even that, that was, was leaked. leaked. That was even leaked. That direct, even that circular <laughs> was leaked. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I know you have a lot to say, Dr. Yes. Uh, Rufai, should I so, take my final story and then you d discuss both, or do you want to say oh yeah, this and then we'll, we'll finish? We'll finish. Take well, it's more about cutting the cost of governance, but you know the state governors have done a lot, you know, and now we are asking, and we've also highlighted the private sector as yeah. well. And then there was the news that came out about you know the airlines were talking about traveling. At last, the much-anticipated uh, discounted uh, tickets for passengers traveling to London 
England. A Nigeria's largest airline, Airpeace, is now available. The tickets have gone live on flyairpeace.com with return ticket fares at 1.2 million naira on economy class, while business class tickets are offered at reduced return fare of 4 million naira. Every Nigerian student studying in the United Kingdom, Europe, Canada, and the United States can now access their special 15% rebate on already reduced economy fares. Airpeace will commence its Lagos-London flight on March 30th, 2024. Sorry, when I saw this news yesterday, I was like, ah, because I was trying to get a, um, a ticket to London and it was 8 million naira on economy on business uh, class i mean okay. you can see that i mean this is that's half that's of it i mean kudos to uh air peace and what they've been doing god bless yes that man even you know, with the student fairs and, and all of that fair really? because these are the same people that are still making nigeria do it i remember the pain he went through mm -hmm. before he got that route to london yes. so kudos to him uh, as for you see that's why ayo with due respect I am talking generally. I think if we really want to implement the Oros everyone, let's start by cutting all these Twitter SSCs. Because Twitter it's just SSCs. duplication of duty. You know, how can a full grown man come out every morning to be re re replying on Twitter to everything? And it costs that a job. I don't know how people even, do, do they even feel fulfilled within themselves? Just because you want to carry title, I have government position. A full grown man. And when you talk, you have wrong, funny arguments. Mm -hmm. Uh, if he wants to compare, why doesn't he compare the Nigerian president with Mili of Argentina that flew commercial airline in December? Air Argentina. I think that's a better comparison. And you are comparing carrying two able-bodied businessmen on a plane with Obama that uh, minus. You know, you see, you can see the comparison. You can see, but that's what happens when we pack a lot of jobless people into governments. And all they do is to tweet here and there and all of that. Like 15 people are tweeting for government on Twitter, it's which is at a waste of our resource. Even to build their own platform, they don't have. If not for Elon Musk, they will not have platform to work. So that's part of why we were saying yesterday that the Orosei report is another smoke screen. It's just, you know, to be able to distract Nigerians. Yeah. It is staying in this government. We have special advisor on information and strategy. Then we have special advisor on media and publicity to the president. Can, can you imagine? What's the difference between information and strategy and media? Mm. So we have a lot of reproduction of duties. Hence, we have a lot of very faulty arguments. We should not be copying the wrong thing. Cost of government is high already. Absolutely. Thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you right there. That is all we have for you guys today in terms of video. I appreciate every one of you for your time and patience with us. I'm just going to take some articles quickly so that we can take it from here. We have a couple of articles to quickly showcase right now. Uh, I might be taking uh, the headlines, but if maybe on the one of Peter will be, I might end up taking some, uh, some paragraphs on it, you know? But please give me some time to start putting this on the screen so that we can take it from here. The first one that we have for you guys is coming from uh, the former governor of Lagos State, uh, Amber Day. You know, Amber Day came out, you know, uh, Twitter is checking because of his statement, you know, but still, um, yeah, because you remember what Amber Day passed through, a lot of Nigerians, you know, they talk for him, um, you know, fight for him um, and all that, but in coming out now to say how cheap Tinubu is not responsible for the economic wars. And but then I talk this one. So it, the thing shocked many people on social media. The former Lagos State Governor Akinwomi Ambode has said President Bola Tinubu is not the originator of the current economic challenges in Nigeria. So I'm just going to leave that one right there because of time. You know, uh, in case you want to read more, this is coming from Daily Post. But meanwhile, I'd like us to move on so that I can quickly um, bring more to your screen. You know, uh, the residents in Abuja, if you're listening to me right now, you're part of the people that live in Abuja. Wait till they stop now, my people. 
Because normally people with the stay for Abuja will not get money now. But what wait till they hear now. They say the, the economic hardship don't, don't hit to not be small. You know, Abuja residents turn to drinking boiled water amid inflation. So they say even to buy water now for house, no, you know, easy. So people call the fresh water for well. Can't go boil them, boil them where where can't put them for inside bowl. They drink hey God. Hey, Tinubu, hey, Tinubu, you forever be remembered, cha. Hey, what a word. See, ya. as soon as I so boil water, now I just think uh, I, I don't want to spend my time on that, you know, because just uh, make sure that one is coming from people's gazette right there, as you all can see, you know. But I would like to quickly bring another one in, you know, uh, police arrest there's a video that was circulating um yesterday or the first today but i think i saw the video yesterday but i'm not going to play it here because um i'm not sure we are allowed to show uh show such video here but i'm just going to read this article for you guys for you guys to see what hunger have caused this one, a hunger be wickedness. That's why I don't know. How cheap, now they call him. Nigerian police arrest 70 years old man for shooting son dead in Abia State after eating remaining food in the house. So should we now call this hunger or wickedness? Or I don't understand how to describe it because since yesterday, a lot of people have been debating on this and all that, blah, blah, blah. You know, 70 years old resident of Aziama village in Omo Neashi, local government area of Abia State in the southeast region of Nigeria, identified as Theophilus Ede, has shot his 27 years old son dead for eating the remaining cooked food in the house. Now, wow. This one has shocked me. Oh. This one has shocked me. You know, uh, I would like to quickly pass this year. My Igbo brothers and sisters, when they talk, we're not going to protest, we're not going to protest. Uh, we are doing well, we are doing that. You see, these are divisions that the politicians want to hear from all of us because we are already disassociating ourselves out of the situation that is happening in the country. Who go, who go die, make it die, we do okay. Because series of videos everywhere. I saw another one today where some Igbo brothers are eating big, big fish. They say, oh, this is our protest. This is our protest. They are eating and drinking expensive drink. What is all that? Can't we just have sense for once? Yes, if we need to be, because some people might not be able to say this now, but I will say it. If you go verse, you are listening to me right now, verse. Verse, jump from your skyscraper, may you die. It's, it's your cup of tea. Because sometimes we blame every, blame, blame the government for everything. We are divided. Now, if you, even though you don't want to protest, okay, just let it be like that. But all these circulating videos everywhere, people are now, you know, trying to, what are you trying to show? What is happening now? See, they say my apple for Abia State. They say hunger, hunger. See, you did there. Not be me right time. Because I, sometimes when I say that we are the problem of ourselves, some people think that, oh, what is this one saying? What is this one saying? But let me move on. Uh, <coughs> NSC. I felt that when I say this NSC people, me not trust them. Just right from time, for some of you that are following me on this platform, you all know that me, when it comes to NSC, me know you get trust for these people at all. That is just the truth. I don't have any single trust on them. But look, they've protested for just two days or one day, I don't know. Now, breaking, NSC suspend protests, give federal government a fresh 14 days ultimatum. What are you? I don't understand. People are dying in starvation. You are still giving the 14 days ultimatum. Somebody when one protest, did they book come in advance? People when one cry, say they hungry, they book come in advance. So this NSC of 18, eh, they are part of the problems we are facing right now in Nigeria. That is my opinion. I don't know about your opinion. Thank you. I'm not going to read anything there because it's very, very irritating. To be honest, now, as we talk, so everybody don't enter house, no protest anymore from tomorrow. <laughs> hey, God. What a country. Ah, wow. But meanwhile, um, in Edo State, the Deputy Governor of Edo State, Comrade Philip Chaibo, <laughs> in our current car electorate, go uh, PDP <laughs> Uh, uh, quarter. Go tell them, say, they could not give me my certificate of return if you don't want to lobby. 
He go meet there for there. Carry your entourage, go there. Say, now nah, me go be the next governor. Now nah, only me, now nah, be the uh, governorship candidate for PDP, not be Aswe Egodaro. So the matter, he be like, say, it is long. And those state deputy governor, Philip Chaibo, has stormed the People Democratic Party, PDP, National Headquarter in Abuja, demanding the party certificate of return for the governorship election so i'm just going to leave that one right there i'm not going to take it now channel television and i carry this one guys press on the like button we are almost getting there then i'd like to quickly go to my principal mr peter gregory will be you know in the ask tinubu question you know you know say mr peter will be is very good with transparency in the third tinubu now say yes this is a rosaye report and all that make you show nigerians you know how you want to work and not just talk them. And at the end, you know, you are not showing it to us. We are tired of hearing without no evidences. So now that one. And so our principal take care and come. I'd like to quickly take this one right there, as you can see right there on your screen. Showing Nigeria amount of resources you will save by implementing or inside reports. Mr. Peter will be testable. So let's take this one together. And also when it comes to Mr. Peter will be at the like make I read the article, you know, further. Sahara reporters on Monday reported that President Tinubu ordered the full implementation of the 2012 Stefano Rosai report, leading to the government's announcement of merging, uh, subsuming, scrapping, and relocate, relocation of several agencies of the government. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, LP, in the 2023 general election, Mr. Peter Obi, has applauded President Bola Tinubu for ordering the full implementation of the 2012 Stephen Orensai report. Okay, but it went on. On a lot of Peter Obi, he go first, thank you. He go say, ah, you do where you do where. Okay, submitted in 2012 in uh, the Orensai report on the public sector reform revealed that there are 541 statutory statutory and no statutory federal government uh, parastate status commissions and agencies. A year earlier, the then president, Goodluck Jonathan, had set up the presidential committee on restructuring the rationalization of federal government parastatus commission and agencies under the leadership of the former head of state, uh, uh, former head of civil service, Stephen Orensai. The 800 pages reported recommended that 263 of the statutory agencies be slashed to 161 agencies, be scrapped to 52, be merged, and 14 are reverted to departments in various ministries. The report also recommends that the law establishing the National Salaries and Wages Commission and repealed the its function taken over by the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Responsibility Commission and advised the federal government to emerge the nation's top three anti-corruption agencies, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offices Commission and Code of Conduct Bureau. Then, Mr. Peter Obi, concomicide. So uh, OB, who noted that the implementation of the report is long overdue, stressing that being in opposition parties does not warrant blind and thought, thoughtless criticism. Rather, whenever the government takes the right decision, the opposition members should agree and, if need be, propose related or better ideas to move the nation forward. He said, unquote, Peter Obi, I want to talk so. I have received several text messages from people wanting to know if I would have implemented the Orensai report, which full implementation has just directed by the president. Nayeram, Pitao B, call Tinubu president. So, for now, they call here, call they talk, 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 anyhow. They try to correct people. When you know that constitutionally, this man is the this man is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your disputation is nobody is uh, you know opposing that, but fine. Is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? He takes every decision today that is affecting you. See, I'm there. I go read that part again because some of Unana Una go put something to cover on a year. Una no one hear that one. But if Nanaja was make that mistake now, or any of my panelists, ah, Una want your cry, Mister Peter will be. 
we be our principal courtinubu the president let me read that part for you again be here he said Mr. Ptaubi, I have received several text messages from the people wanting to know if I would have implemented the Orosa report, which full implementation has just been directed by the president. In response to the question, I would like to refer everyone to my manifesto and my response to similar questions during my campaign. On the 5th of October 2022, at Harvard University, I was asked, Will you implement the original report? And I responded in affirmative. Let's move on because I really want us to take this. Mr. Peter Obi went on. I went further to explain the implementation. The report is one of the best ways to make governments governance efficiency, cost effective and productive. Being in opposition does not warrant blind and thoughtless criticism. Whenever the government takes the right decision, we should agree if we need, uh, if, if need be, propose related or even better ideas to move the nations forward. Exactly. Exactly. That's why you see on this platform, as things be in a so many the report. Time. That's why I'm looking forward to something that I will bring here someday. Everybody will be rejoicing. I'm, I'm not hating anybody. You cannot be hating somebody. When the person will do something good, then you are still hating. I'm not saying this one is good, though. I'm talking generally. For this Orange report, me, I never give my, 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 my opinion on it at all. I'm not saying it's good or it's not good. I'm talking based on Peter Obi's response right now. Peter Obi went on. I've always been an advocate of the three critical components of the Orange report, which are... One, drastic, drastically cutting the cost of governance, eliminating the overlapping of responsibilities to ensure the responsibilities are appropriately domiciled. And then two, increasing efficiency and effectiveness, which will increase productivity. Although the implementation of the report is long overdue, it is implementation is a welcome development so long as the decision is informed by the principles. Beyond implementing the Orange report, the government should go further and cut the cost of governance across boards. Having found it imperative to implement the report, the, governance, uh, the government should now do away with the bogus and needless wastages of our scarce resources on frivolous issues and deploy such funds to the critical areas of education, health, pulling people out of poverty. Then Mr. Peter Obi went on. However, we must not rush to implement the original report just because those that we be directly affected are mostly civil servants. A very deep understanding of the working of the federal uh, bureaucracy will be required to effectively implement the reports. Grasping the uh, symmetrics between the federal and the other ties of government will be imperative as federal agencies have branches and outreaches. In all the 36 states, we, the political leaders, should be ready to back up such implementation, which our sacrifice from comfort and selfishness for the overall development of the nation. In implementing this report, conscious efforts must be made to cushion the effect of such a major overhaul on the workers to avoid driving more people into hardship in these very challenging times. Then Mr. Peter Obi went on. I also, uh, also, Nigerians are yet to be informed about the extant white paper pertinent to the report implementation. Moreover, you cannot ask those who are likely to be affected by the uh, downsizing to manage the process. Government must also show clearly the amount of resources to be saved in the implied shrinking of government. It should also indicate clearly where and how the saved resources are to be redeployed. Now, Peter Obi, I talk so. So on this particular one, I'd like us to move on. I appreciate every one of you. I think I still have about one or two to go so we can take it from here. I'd like us to quickly listen to 
uh, Sunday Ibohu, although we reported it yesterday on uh, on an article, but I'd like us to uh, listen to the Vaba uh, part of that explanation of yesterday. I appreciate you all, my people. Let's listen to this quickly. Please, release say, release number count, release number count, release number count, stop politics. This guy didn't do anything. Today is 27 February 2024. Release him. Let him go and stay with the family. This guy just fight for his people in the Southeast, like me. I'm fighting for my people in Yoruba land. Release him. Let him go. Stop the uh, politics game. Release Kano. Let him go home. Please, release him. So, Tinubu, release now the Kano. Everybody, they tell you now, release now the Kano. Or oh, God, release him. But meanwhile, let's quickly listen to this one as well. It does. Alex Oti, thank you. Thank you. For 24 good years, 8,760 days, Abia State was under robbery by these three men here. These three men you are seeing here. Abia State was under robbery. Under robbery. What is the question why they ask now? All this money, where well, let's they bring out now, they repair, they do all these things, they, this power supply. Where the money, where is the money coming from? Alex Oti, who be your papa? Is your papa Elon Musk? Elon Musk? Who is your papa? May they get the money? Not be the same seat where you day, not, this, not be the same seat these three people. They for eight years, you never reach one year. See what you they do for your state. Abia State was under robbery. Robbery attack by this gang. This gang here. 8,760 days. 24 years. Thieves. Arm robbers. We know they carry gun. Arm robbers. Now what I call them? God, I don't know what we do you. We use leaders, they punish us. You use leaders, they punish us. People that are supposed to be guiding us, they are the one punishing us. See what they build everywhere. All of them, if they come out from a governor, they go enter Senate. Come out, Boja, and then build, and then get, they get plaza, get restaurant, get hotel. They get hotel, restaurant, plaza for Abuja here. They were squandering our money. And you say you people will have peace. You people will never have peace. What are we asking for? If I let you want thief money, you go thief money. He has done his part. Now, see what they happen for the country. Money did this country. Money day, not what you want to tell me. Money did this country. There is a lot of money in this country. Money day. Anything, if they want to turn this country to Dubai, can stand, they go turn up. But the wickedness in them cannot allow them. The selfishness and the greediness in them cannot allow them. Wicked people. Wicked people all of them be wicked. Wicked old leaders. Nonsense. Bastard wicked people. They don't kill us mentally. Kill us. No way we would never take kill us. Remember me when I use guns, shoot us. Rubbish. All right. Uh, Governor uh, OT is doing a lot of wonderful things in Abia State as we speak. You see those three faces where they show for that, those are the people we destroyed our states. You know, like it's just like unfortunately, the same thing where we come from now. People are saying technocrat, technocrat, technocrat. I don't know, I don't know what your basket could do for eight years. All I can see, you know, now the videos where we get from my platform where I take go show now the road where they do, where will they use hand, they remove biscuit roads. You know, so it's very unfortunate that Obaseki spent the whole eight years. Now, they are not trying to uh, uh, cover up his eight years by saying that he was building a foundation. You know, when you are building a foundation, in most cases, you cannot see it yet. Now, in the future, now you go see him. Who cares about that now? We want to see things so that we can judge you. You are telling us you build a foundation for eight years and we cannot see it. Neither they talk now, my people, because you know the man will be out of office soon. 
They are already telling us that the man was using eight years to build foundation. So the foundation, uh, though people will rejoice later on. Uh, but uh, although you might not see the foundation yet, but you will see it in the future. Hey, God. <laughs> we will see it in the future. Ah, I be as you get. Uh, but nevertheless, um, Governor Oti is doing excellently well. When people they do something, we're supposed to applaud them. Let's look at what Governor Oti did here again. Permission and and it's come now. It's come true, you know. So I'm very excited. I'm very happy, and I'm very happy for the people of Abia State and for the Southeast. So I'm happy that uh, today uh, the problem has been solved. Uh, information available to me is that gas has started flowing from Owaza uh, to the plant. Uh, about four 15 MVA substations have. Uh, been built by Geometric. About 14 kilometer or 24 kilometer uh, power line have been raised by Geometric also. So all is set for ABBA to be powered. I feel on top of the world uh, because we set out to provide reliable electricity for the people of ABBA. I'm finding it hard to find the words to express how I feel. I'm excited that the day has finally come where what we have been promising in Diaba has come true. That is, that we'll be able to give them reliable and affordable power so that they can focus on doing their business with lower operational costs. The first phase consists of three gas turbines. We have a location for the fourth gas turbine to cap the full output to 188 megawatts and as time goes on we'll expand to meet the power demands with their bar friends and even export power into the national grid the much anticipated era of optimal and reliable electricity production and distribution in and around one of nigeria's leading industrial cities aba in abia state nigeria is finally here <laughs> That's great news. All right. May could I help me ask my own governor, governor, Inoya Seobaseki, what he do for almost eight years. Where is Osiomo power plant? People, now where they defend that? Where are they? All those hungry, selfish, stomach infrastructures that are defending this satanic governor well, on a day, hey, oh, eight years, you guys don't have anything to show. Now, secretary, secretary, now now they carry camera go. <laughs> now, now Josh, no, be me to talk now. <laughs> no, 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 let's say it, I raise. Now, carry camera go, secretary. Oh, look at secretary. Hey, look at secretary. I, I mentioned it here the other day. I can build secretary with my followers here. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm yes, telling you. I can build secretary. Obviously. If I raise it here, my people are telling say this is the budget. Make we quickly build them. We can build it. And of apart course. from the secretariat that Obaseki is showing, with the individuals, many of us have as this uh, different part of Nigeria. What did they that secretariat where they build where we no year what so? Eh? It's very sad. See, 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 Governor Oti will join our office. I beg, how many months Governor Oti does pay for office? So he never ever spent one year. Abi. If I'm not mistaken, you don't reach one year. Let the center here and the table come. It's a big shame. I beg anybody that visited Benin recently, I beg tell us the level of your light there. Because they say, oh, Basaki give you now, so much power plant. Una go uh, let <laughs> I, was, I beg, I'm waiting for my turn. I can't wait. I'm, una, I'm starting my engine. No. <laughs> Whether they, they give you now 24, because Governor Oti now. Is about to be giving his people 24 7 light. The first state that want to start doing it in the whole Nigeria. All Basak, they go from go all white parties, different states. If they go all white party everywhere, you will travel from those states to Lagos State to go and go white party where people they carry blow blow and uh, this thing. Ah, what a shame. Sometimes when I think of it that I'm part of the people that, that brought this man into power in second term in office, I feel ashamed, but I still have to say it. 
because Oshomole pushed everybody, you know, to pitily support Obaseki. If not that, I did not know be Obaseki. Who know Obaseki? Why should I support someone like Obaseki anyway? I supported him because of the bully, oppression, intimidation, suppression from Oshomole. So Obaseki got back in power based on pity. Let's say it how it is. And every Edolite, or rather the front runners that supported Governor Obaseki, that is still supporting him today, I bet you all, they are supporting the man based on stomach infrastructure. Yes. Go find out. Do your research. You will know that this is why they are supporting. It's a big disgrace to know that my state is ugly, dirty. People say, no, they talk, say dirty. Talk. How you say my TikTok? Okay, my account, my account, my account, the ratio that for people say, ah, uh, many people for not look down on me. Let's say it how it is. My state is ugly and very dirty. The only places that is beautiful in a those state, now your house. If you build mansion inside your compound, but if you mistakenly carry your camera, go outside of your fence, they will see the dilapidated roadway past your, your fence. So you all carry that camera, show inside your compound, show inside your room, your living room, show your beauty. Just end that there. Just end it there. So disgraceful. Now, the same people like Rufai stated earlier on that all these satanic people on Twitter, the debunking, the whatever that is happening, supporting their satanic uh, principles and all that, they have started now saying, oh, you people will not understand what Obaseki did, but in years to come, every one of you will get to understand what your Obaseki do. So you want me to get patience, mind the way for years to come before I go understand. When people in Abia is already understanding now, Ah, now wow. Now wow. Anyway, thank you very much, my people. That is all I have for you guys today. I've done my part. I've presented everything that I have for you guys. I'd like to start hearing from our people. So I'd like to take calls as usual. As you all know, let me quickly take calls. The first person that is going to call, let's see uh, the first person that is going to call into the show today and take it from there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you. Madam Rita, I can see right there on the comment section. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, everyone right there. I appreciate you all. I'd like to quickly appreciate um Dosakari for the super chat earlier on while I was giving my presentation. May God bless you. My pocket never run dry as well. Guys, help us to press on that like button. Help us to share. Press on the dollar sign. Encourage what we are doing here. We know they take money from politicians. Now only Una, they pay us. Yes, that's one thing you I want you guys to understand. Now Una, now they pay us. We know they take money from politicians and now we never take money from politicians to work against the people. I'm not that kind of person. If I want to do it, I would have done it a long time ago. You get the way they take the you know, say you get the way they take they burn everybody. So people they way they born with something, you can't change it. So people they way come this life, come learn the same something. So that's a different thing. We don't take money from anybody. I work for Obasaki, I didn't take penny from him, and we didn't discuss it. I work for Peter Obi, I didn't take penny from anybody, and we didn't discuss it. That's not my because I want to be able to be to express myself whenever I'm here. I don't want any kind of hindrances that will stop me from saying it how it is, just because these people have supported you in the past. No. There was a time some people were supporting me on this platform as well. They were trying to capitalize on those support to use me and use my platform. I have to stop them. No, if you are supporting me, just like Mr. Nusakari just supported me right now. You know, tomorrow now you'll now be giving me conditions on the kind of things I need to do. Then you're already putting me in a comfortable situation. If you support me from your heart, God bless you equally. But giving me conditions, you must do things like this because of this support there, it becomes a problem. This is what we are getting from these people collecting money from politicians. Because there's no way you collect 1 million, 5 million, 10 million, 20 million from politicians and go on air and speak against them. It's not possible. Do your research and find out. You cannot dare. Like I said before, the day I will start collecting money from these people, God forbid, you will know. Because you will not see how come on air, I will not start saying actually. You know, people will be asking me a, a straight question. I'll not be say, actually, you know, actually, you know, say, actually, you know. So I'll not pass the judgment at 4 30 a.m. in the morning. Then you now understand that, yes, this guy has been compromised. God forbid. We, I rebuke that. We shouldn't find ourselves in that kind of satanism because there's, there's nothing you're going to gain from it. 
You can't get anything from it. So I appreciate every one of you, my wonderful people. Continue to do what you're doing to encourage what we're doing here. Now go, now go bless all my people. Yes, uh, no cough right now. I didn't know. <laughs> There's nobody calling in or is the phone. Anything wrong with the phone? I don't know. I'm not receiving any call. So let me go to the panel so that Mr. Alex can talk to us. I'll pick calls later on. I can check the phone. I don't know. I, no, it's strange. Um, Mr. Alex, thank you very much. Uh, you you are not the first on the panel. The first on the panel is Mr. Jonathan, but I'm only prioritizing you because you joined us from Bini. Talk to us, sir. Yes. Good evening to you. Yes, I have never taken that for granted, and I'm very grateful. Each time I get prioritized, it means a lot to me, but it saves me sometimes from battery. Sometimes it, it runs very fast. You know, I, I can deal with gadgets. So I'm very grateful. I've never capitalized on that. And sometimes I, I actually I'm not comfortable with it. At the same time, I'm I'm very grateful for it due to the you know the nature of things around here. But uh, Mr. Najawash, looking at Alex Ote, of course, like I have done with, with Mr. Peter Obi, I have made up my mind I'll do everything I can to get to political office at, at whatever level, as councillor, as House of Assembly member, as of as of right. Whatever, there are people who can make the difference. This has gone to show that it's not just talking, people are talking. People really mean well for the states. Alex Oti has let us know that, wow, people can talk and do the talk. Wow, I'm speechless. I have been speechless. I've been seeing videos on TikTok. People are testifying of three straight days, no light interruption. People have been, you know, some. I saw a video, a woman was just crying out of excitement that this is happening in her time. She's 63 years old. She was crying because she didn't see it coming. She said she had given up. So there is no abracadabra. There is no indaboski bahose about this. There is no abitu shaker about this. There's no abracadabra. There's no mystic. There's no mysticism. All the fraud is being exposed. We had similar projects in those states. And some lunatics will come and tell you that it's a, it has been donated to the national grid. What a shame. Built with Edo State ta taxpayers' money. Millions of dollars. When I tell you that we have information as to the account details of, I mean, balance allegedly of the present Edo State governor and his account details before he became a governor. We have information. The world is a small place. We have information. Al allegedly, we do have information. How the guy is now rich in hundreds of millions of dollars. You may dispute it, it's up to you, but I'm talking for the love I have for my land. My great grandfathers gave my father this land, and my father is giving it to me, and I'm giving it to my children. I'm a stakeholder. I have rights to ask questions, and I have right to know what is going on and to give my own opinion, not out of hate, but out of the love for one's land. I may go to England, I may go to Finland, I may go to Scotland, but the only land where I belong to. He said, those states, this is my father's land. That's why I'm passionate about those states. I'm passionate about Nigeria and Nigerians and governance. But particularly, Alex Oti, actually, I didn't trust him. I must be honest. From the beginning, because of the shage, the political shage they've done, they've done to us. Especially looking at the characters of those who came on the Labour Party in the House of Rep and National uh, um, uh, Senate. But Alex Oti has told me, it's like he called my name verbally and said, Alice, I'm your namesake. I've got the kind of heart you have. Just watch me do this thing. And the guy has done it. Where is Obaseke? Send it, tag up Obaseke, does the governor, on these videos. Look for that video of that um, project and send it to him. So, so that he will, he will look at himself in the mirror and be ashamed of himself. We live in a state where illiteracy and timidity is just the order of the day. When, when we criticize Tunubu, people hail us in a dust state. When we criticize the uh, former governors, they, they hail us. When Americans criticize their leaders, they say, yay. But when you talk to governor, they say, who are you to talk to a dust state governor? As if he's a masquerade, that we should be, a state, we should be scared of him. Somebody who was born in, in an hospital in Benin City has become a god to a land that gave birth to him, a land that bettered him, a land that preserved his life. When he was vulnerable and infant, suddenly he has become a masquerade. You, you, you cannot ask questions. You, you cannot criticize his wicked policies. 
you, you cannot ask him why local government uh, elections were, were 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 put on hold for three years. You, you cannot ask why he ran House of Assembly with nine members instead of twenty-four. No, you can. You, you don't have right to ask as an adult son. It's just, it's just, it's just a shame. Alex Oti, you've, you've, you've made me remember Kwame Krumah of Ghana. You've made me, you made me remember Thomas Sankara of, of Burkina Faso. You've made me remember the likes of Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, who forgot to pay children's school fees because he was busy with state affairs. You've made me remember Nancy Mandela, who actually forfeited his youthful life, his children, his young wife, young children, and went to jail for 27 years. Alex Oti, tributes to you, and you have become an inspiration to young people. You have become an inspiration to young men across the country. P people are looking up to you now. You've, you've become a political colossus. You've you become a political parazesus, a political nalima tangere. And I want to say, I salute you. The, the people of Abia said, thank you sh for showing the lights. You know, Namdi Azikiwe said, show the lights and let others follow. Indeed, we, we will follow. We will aspire. We will not just keep talking. We'll keep talking and we will aspire. Um, I, I have already said it with Peter Obey, and I'm saying it again, and I will do everything I can to get into politics. I'm scanning. I've gone to the Labour Party. I've seen a little a bit of it. I'll go to other smaller parties. Ah, then I'll know where, where to pitch, pitch, pitch my tent. What, what matter is the personality, not necessarily the party these days. So ah, this can really happen in, in our time. And I was, sometimes we will say it will be in our children, children time. It can happen. Like that young man said, it doesn't take how many years to turn a country around. The wickedness, the evil-heartedness of black leadership in Nigeria especially. My God, what is it? Evil God said, let there be light. Let there be light. Nigerian leaders are saying, no, there must be darkness. And where there is darkness is evil. Manipulation, budget paddling, borrowing and stealing, looking, lies, kidnapping, rape, is what happens in darkness. My goodness. They are ravaging their own citizens. Citizens are busy. Leaders are busy across the world planning for the next 20 years for their pregnant citizens. Those that will get pregnant in the next 20 years. Children that will go to school, technology, transportation, agriculture, security, gadgets like drones. People are preparing to go. Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries are sending women for the first time to go to the moon, to go to space. Our leaders are busy killing, killing their own people with insecurity, lies, taking this money to another man's country. Look at the backwardness. Thank you, Alex Oti. Thank you. And I know you will do more. Bini will see your so when I win your way. When you thank somebody, you will have the courage to do more. Thank you. Thank you for exposing our government in those states. Thank you. The lies they tell you is laid foundation for 30 years. Go to those states. Come here. When it rains, you, you, you cannot go anywhere for three hours, for four hours. Sometimes the whole day you pack your car and come and take it. The next day, God save you if, if the car is still there. I don't hate anybody. I also voted for him. I had nothing in mind. I didn't, in fact, in fact, I hate politics before now because of the occultism involved in it. I can never join any court. I didn't join in my school days. I didn't join uh, as a youth. I didn't join as an adult. Politics cannot drag me to take blood covenant. It was the order of the day in the, in the late 90s, 1999 to 207. You must belong to this and that and that. So that drove me. But, but looking at the things happening now, social media, events, or big movements, then so some of us will say we can no longer keep quiet. We can't stay by the lines and watch wicked men and women continue to perpetuate evil. So we are on a coalition with them. Light and darkness have to meet at some point. Indeed, light has triumphed over darkness in Abia State. Send this video to Mr. Oti. I say thank you. You've inspired me. You've inspired my friends. We've discussed it since yesterday. We've talked about it this morning. We, we've, 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 we've watched videos about it. And we've tagged other people that we can tag to see what is going on. How a man can give light to a state. It's in, in, in a nation where darkness is ravaging everywhere. You can't do business in Nigeria. 
You have to fuel your generator. You have to fuel your life. You have to fuel your car. You have to fuel everything about you. It's crazy. You fuel everything with the profits you. How much are you not going to make? And they will bring taxes. Nepal will bring beef for you. For, for electricity, you, you, you didn't consume. And when you talk, let's say, uh, government is powerful. After God is government. Oh, don't talk. Who are you to fight government? You are a nuisance. Really? And they travel. They travel. The most wicked and dangerous set of human beings are most Nigerian politicians. Governors, name it. Senators, rep members, name it. Very evil set of people. What is wrong in you having a set of emergency on Nigerian electricity? Turning the whole nation into a construction site to, to construct electricity equipment across the nation. It doesn't take two, three years to do these things. Peter will be a great man, went to Egypt to ask them and study them for a week or so before elections. I, I'm sure that was his first project. But these enemies are, 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 of light withstood him. Like the angel told Daniel, the day you started praying, God sent me to come and answer a prayer, but I was withstood. By the principalities. Michael had to come and help me. 21 days we fought. I had to leave him there to come and give you the answers to your prayer. The enemies have withstood Peter Obi, but the journey is not over yet. We, we will continue to fight alongside with Mr. Peter Obi, with Aisha Yusufu and Medati and everybody who mean well for humanity. So I'm very happy. In fact, I'm planning. Hopefully, God blesses me. Um, if I if I if, if I make money from business or from my work, I'll go to Abia State and invest, even if it's one room apartment. Let me be going there once in a while with my family. It's something. I will invest there. Yes, I will. Even if it's one room and a palo, I'm good. I'm not a greedy human being. The man has brought lights. If I can start a small business there, I will make money because there is electricity. And I will pay my bills. Abia we pay their bills. Do you know where you know that Nigerians are good people? Look at the way they pay for fuel. They go and fuel their car. They pay without hassles. They pay for other things. They work. Government take taxes. There are no hassles. So why are you, why are you wicked in them? All over the world, leaders, they work with the private sector to provide electricity. And the people pay the bills. But Nigerians are saying, no, you must remain in darkness. My grandfather complained about this darkness in the 70s. My father complained in the 90s. I'm complaining now in the year 2024. And my children are about to, to start complaining. But Alex Oti uh, of Abia State is saying, no, we can change the narratives. Thank you. Thank you. On that, I will say I am very, very, very grateful. I'm full of gratitude. I'm full of gratitude. Because the gesture is, is really magnanimous. We have to say the way it is, like Najawash, we always say. We can't continue bombing people, but we have to also praise them when they do the right thing. Thank you, Alex. Thank, yes. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Yes, yes, my Thank brother. You. Yeah, I'm Thank not an Igbo man. Some people think my, my mother Thank is Igbo. I'm not Thank an Igbo man, but I'm just say, a man who loves to say the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, what can other governors say now? What do they do with this money? Go to Dubai and buy, and buy land and houses that you're going to leave behind. Like your children, some of them will go into drugs and use this money to smoke drugs and take live stupid life. Most of these leaders, their children are sorry to say, very wayward. I've seen most of them, very wayward. If you see how they live life, these guys, alcoholic addiction and everything. I must, I'm with respect to those that take alcohol. So um, and uh, I saw Mac Michael Zekome. He's a man that I've always looked up to. And he has never failed up to now. Of course, these are some of the people we look up to in school. I, I read textbooks where really, their names were mentioned during the struggle for democracy before 1999, with the likes of Ganifa with me and, uh, uh, and the rest. I was trying to ask him when he was on a platform, but I couldn't make it. These are people that should be in, in the affairs of things. Why they didn't aspire for political office? Although it's a legal luminary, but we have some people who were in the legal luminary business and they left for politics. Some of them performed very woefully, like Nelson Wiki. Ozekome and his lights, Falana and the rest, who are always giving us everything about law and, you know, or whatnot. They ought to be aspiring for state governorship, for presidency. I can't get it. 
Yes, understand the passion for, for their profession. Barack Obama is a lawyer, for God's sake. Bill Clinton is a lawyer. They became president. So if you are listening to me, my cousin my S A N, please, sir, consider running for political position, please. Either as a president or as a governor of those states. You've been a light to younger ones like us. Thank you for speaking up again. Even when Buhari was in office, you, you, you spoke up, putting your life on the line. Even when you were kidnapped, you came out and God helped you and you, you, you kept on speaking up. Thank you for adding your voice towards the plight of the Hoi Kolois, of the, of the Oduduwa Republic, of the new settler of the Bini Kingdom. We continue to touch like this government. Look at, look at what is going on. The same time, Alex Oti came to power. The same time, Tunubu and his gang came to power. One would have thought the whole country, federal government projects are, 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 are all going. It's all about going to Dubai, going to this, you know, borrowing money. Very soon now, by October, they, they, they want to borrow for next year's budget. <laughs> Kai, my goodness. Have you, have you read the book, Animal Farm? <laughs> These are people that did did uh, Nadeko. <laughs> Tunubu was part of that. <laughs> Tunubu was part of Nadeko fighting 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 a bachelor. My goodness. Now that was <laughs> oh thank you. Anyways, Mr. Peter will be have said it. We we don't criticize them blindly and uh, we continue to stand for what is right. I, I love the way Peter B is doing that. Those in the those states can see what Peter B is doing as an opposition party. When we criticize the Dose governor, people will say, shut up, who are you? Who is your father? Who, where are you? Before you know your house will be on government land. Your hotel will be on government land. Your private business will be on government land. It will be showing you the meaning of opposition to criticize constructively as a citizen, as a stakeholder. Thank you, Mr. Najawash. I'm still here. All right. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Alex. God bless you. I appreciate you for your submission. God bless every one of you right there listening to us. But before I call on the next person, you know, uh, call us. I don't know what is wrong with my phone, to be honest. <laughs> you know, the phone, I, I don't know. I basically say this phone, I, I need to change it now. I don't know. He, he, he messed up last week again and all that. So, but meanwhile, let's listen to this video quickly. Let's listen to this video here. Yes, the technocrats, no a technocrat, as we have seen them in this state, are those who convince themselves that everybody in their village are witches and wizards. So they don't go to the village, they can't speak the language, they don't know how to respect king, they don't know how to respect traditional institutions, they wear suits to visit the upper. Look, uh, my good brother here is, is a very intelligent guy. All those research <laughs> you are talking about, technocratic research, has no bearing with the woman who is selling at the Selu market. The people in Ubu Yoko just want to drive on a smooth road. Your research and your technocratic abilities means nothing to them if they are still swimming erosion to go to their various houses. And when I say no, the people, I mean no, the people. We are, we are here. We, talk, we discussed it, I think, maybe if not here, somewhere else. Mm. A man who wants to be governor of our state, who went to his village with an interpreter. How do you explain that? A 64-year-old man, a grandfather, went to his village to talk to his people that he wants to be governor over with an interpreter. If a grandfather can do that, imagine his own children, the kind of link they will have with their people. Imagine then his grandchildren, if they will even know the road to their village. There is a South African song, he says, no matter where you go, remember the road that will lead you home. Mm -hmm. Look, we have discussed this over and over again, and then nobody should reduce a homeboyism or maybe connection to the people to pedestrianism, let me borrow his language, <laughs> to say that uh, a homeboy is an area boy. Look, nobody is an area boy in the real sense of it. It is those that you refuse to give education, those that refuse to give empowerment that you now call area boys. If you give them the requisite knowledge, they will compete favorably. And for them to even succeed in being area boys, it shows that they have the kind of competence and capacity that is even more than you if they have uh, equivalent uh, opportunities. So in the final analysis, uh, uh, answering to your question, going forward, you know, you talked about the federal, let's talk about the state. Here, we had a chief, Lucky Benedion, uh, Mr. Lucky Benedion, not chief, as governor. And he was very close to the people. When he left office, most of the investment, uh, uh, most of his investment, are domiciled in the state. His own father's investment are domiciled in the state. 
one of which we are using to communicate with our people today. If not that they are close to home. He built a university in this town when it was not fashionable to even have a private university, when it was unrealistic to have a private in, a, a, a university. ITV started doing 24 hours when it was almost impossible for a station. Even NTA, run by the federal government, was doing eight hours a day. ITV was doing 24 hours. This is because these people have a connection with these people. They built a university in a place that was either to a bush, Okada. Today, Okada is one of the fast-growing society uh, communities in this place. You go to Okada Plaza, you go to Oti, the list is endless. And then we had a comrade that was Shomole, who, despite all his life, in northern Nigeria, could speak the Hausa language, but he could also speak a Sako language. He also came home every Christmas. He also came home most weekend, and he had a, an infinite connection with his people. Go to his Yamu village and see what he did there. Today we have a technocrat who is neither here nor there. A technocrat who wears suits to the palace of the Oba of Benin. Is it a crime to wear suits? No, 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 all right. If he had understood the language, he will know that there is a street in Benin called Aigoba Simi. You do not contend with the Oba. You don't drag with the Oba. <laughs> he is dragging persistently. All right. He's sure of that, in fact. He is uh, I will come me. back to you. It is not even the man. Idris. Does. The man does Idris. not understand. Idris. That's, that's, that's the length of the... <laughs> I do people. <laughs> Nigeria was thank you for that video. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so so nice thank you thank you alice part two that guy now alice part two <laughs> exactly <laughs> and do people yes yes i will reach out to him or i i, I will reach out to him i'll be following him for a while now yeah, my, no, my mother even sent me the video already thank no, you i like he's that he's a great guy i'll I, bring that, I beg I'll bring you you'll play uh, yeah. and you'll play that video over and over during the week sir and uh alice what is project if you can get a short video about it i'll, I'll be using it to pepper everybody around the world so that they will know the right thing to do light is i mean light has come anyway M thank Mr. You like you said bring bring the guy here and then let him give a, a kind of analysis on what he thinks about the, the the governorship aspirants that are going to run in the next election and we can have a nice time with him yeah of course he's listening to you now i'll bring him don't worry he's listening to us i'll bring him here so that he can talk to us you know, I, I'm proud of him. Same way I'm proud of every one of you, you know, because he has been there talking. He's really, really talking. He goes to different channels everywhere. He's talking how our state can be better. And that is the best thing, you know, one needs to do right now to have a better country. If you are there for the your arms, you not know, consign me, you not know, consign me. Don't worry, they will, they will catch your grandma, man. And that day you go, no, say, he consign you. Yes, the situation in Nigeria is affecting say everyone. yesterday. <clears throat> Sir? Somebody just unmuted and start talking. Who is this? Ah, is it one? Is it Shingbo? You just unmuted. You are telling us your story over there. You know, please. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, it unmuted in my pocket. It wasn't intentional at all. Okay, sir. That's fine. Thank you. All right, guys. I appreciate every one of you. Let's start talking. I appreciate you all. God bless you all. Okay, let me quickly call on the next person to speak to us right now. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Kisley, thank you very much, sir, for your time, for your patience. Please, I'd like you to talk to us. Good evening to you. Eight thank minutes. You. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Um, greetings. Thank you, and uh, greetings to all the panelists and uh, all those that are on the comment section, those that are calling or that will call. I greet everyone. Um, you know, I couldn't, there's no way I could have, you know, said it better or stated better enough than. Uh, Mr. Alex, with respect to Governor Oti, all I would just do is that I will add to his voice what he said, which is to uh, implore or ask uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Elvis, all of us here, to showcase what is happening in Abia State. If you want to call it bragging, let it be so. Let, let, let us brag about it. Let the people of Abia State brag about it. If you want to say show them pepper, let it be so, so that these people 
we know after all that is the difference someone that is bringing development to his own people and you are siphoning your money the money the common wealth of your own people you are siphoning it we need to we need to showcase it so we need to really if you want to say it's bragging let it be bragging if bragging is what will bring development if bragging about the development we're seeing in abia state if that is what is going to take to bring true development to nigeria across board let it be bragging let's showcase it in fact every day let it let let it be so i just i just want to add that to mr alex's uh, submission and then uh, you know with respect to you know the the videos that you showed you know you presented today that of the peter obi let me take that first you know talking about the onosai report see for me yes i agree with logical and constructive criticism but there is no way you can look at the policy of this government that you will not see you will not see greed you will not see deception that you will not see crooked way of trying to manipulate the people I agree with Mr. Peter will be on the part of constructive criticism. Yes. But with these people, this Orosaye report is another deception. It's another crooked policy implementation. Talk of deception at its very best. Why? Let's, let's lay it out. Let's just say it the way it is. <clears throat> This so-called Orosai report that they are, they, are, they, are, they are peddling all over the place now is over a decade ago. As at the time that report was submitted to the federal government, to the Jonathan government, Nigeria had a little bit, plus minus 500 parastatas. Plus minus, I can't say the exact figure, but it is within that range. Plus minus 500 ministries, parastatas, and agencies. Today, Nigeria has more than 1,300 ministry and parastatus. And it's saying go and implement the Orosai report. It is deception. What they should do is to review it. Review it, first of all. Do a thorough review because that report is outdated. Successive government, Jonathan inclusive, Buhari in, the, in his eight years, succeeded in creating more than 500 new parastatas and agencies. You won't believe that. Don't take my word for it. Go to the, to, go, go, go to the website of the, of the Federal Civil Service Commission. Go there now. It's all there. Go to the, 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 the website of the Federal Civil Service Commission and see all the agencies there. It's over 1,300. So what are we talking about here? So if you have... If you, if, you, if you are implementing the Orosaye report, it's nothing. First of all, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't hold water. And to start with, what, you, what the, the appropriate thing to do, even if you come out with that, is you also have to come out on that very day. Was it yesterday or two days ago when you came out and said that? Let Nigerian, Nigerians know the exact amount that you will save from, this, from the implementation of this report. Is it 5 billion naira? Is it 10 billion naira? Let us know. Be, 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 because the same way you did the subsidy thing, we don't know how much you are saving from subsidy per month now. We don't know how much you have saved in the last eight, nine months. We don't know. And I'm glad Professor Ezekome again stated it. The subsidy is still there. It's still there. And petrol is already six something, close to 700. What if the subsidy is actually in reality, removed. It is not removed as we speak right now, Nigerians. Whether you like, take it. If you like, that you are, you, you, you is your own problem. As of today, the subsidy is still intact. So what will happen if it is? That is that is what is killing them. It is. I mean, it's buying them. They can't. They can't hold it. They they having sleepless night because eventually. If this subsidy is eventually removed in the real sense of it, you will be buying petrol at 1,200 naira. Period. So it's all vague. 
So the Orosaye report is the same game they are playing. It's just deception to just to distraction again, just to say the least, just distraction and deception, crooked. You have 1,300 ministries today. Why can't you? So what will happen? The Orosaye report will only cover 500 thereabout. So what are you saving in the recess of it in Nigeria of today compared you are, you are, you are using the report of 2012? 12 years ago. So, it's a good thing if you look at it on the surface that, okay, they are implementing it, they are making moves to reduce cost of governance. But I want to tell Nigerians that in itself, in its itself, the implementation of this policy is archaic. It's, it's, it, it cannot achieve the desired policy. Okay, if you are talking about reducing the cost of governance. This same man, this same man, Mr. Tinumbu, appointed 48 ministers. So what were you thinking then in terms of cost of governance? 48 ministers. And if you like it or not, just in his eight months alone, in his eight months alone, he has already created 10 new parastatas and ministries. So what happened to those ones? Are you going to scrub, scrub them? Are you going to scrub those ones? just in his 10 months alone. As we speak right now, they are already, uh, the National Assembly is passing laws. They have already passed some now that in those laws, they, there are ministries and para agencies to be created. Cost of governance. It's all deception. We are waiting here to see how far that we go. The, the true reduction in the cost of governance. Because for me, the way I see it, I just see deception, I just see distraction, just to distract Nigerians. What a, what a very, this, these people are so good at, decep at deception. Very vague, very unclear. Mr. Peter will be asked the fundamental question, tell us how much are we going to save here? Let us know so that we know from day one this is this is it, but they can't tell you that. I can tell you if I can tell you if they come out with the numbers, you'll be disappointed from these old things they are peddling and parading or also your report that is old and archaic, out, outdated. I think that's the right word. It's outdated. You have to review, go for the review the 1,300 ministries and parastatas that are not in fact do you know that nigeria please go there this is 2024 this is 24th century go in nigeria have a department called department of fresh water i was shocked to my bone i don't know what they do there under the ministry of agriculture that ministry of agriculture for me if anything that ministry should be set aside somehow i i, I just don't know that ministry alone is golping, is, 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 is spying Nigeria, the economy of the country. The amount of money they continue to budget to that ministry alone, if you if Nigerians need to open their eyes, that ministry of agriculture is where the wastage, is where the most corruption after oil and gas, it is the ministry of agriculture. I was shocked to my bone and marrow. Check it. That ministry has more than 150 agencies. On that Ministry of Agriculture alone, we don't know so much things that we just don't know. Ministry of Fresh Water, I don't understand. Now we're hearing the news. People are boiling water. People are boiling boiling water in order for them not to get typhoid. And they have one, one department called Ministry of Fresh Water. Are you kidding? Check that ministry out. That is where they are, they are sinking Nigeria, that ministry. That Ministry of Agriculture is where they are sinking the, 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 the economy of that country. They, they hide so much money. They siphon so much money through that Ministry of Agriculture. Because it's, very, it's a very easy way to cajole the people, to fool the people. Because when you talk of food, we're going, we going to help the farmers. We're going to you know, support the, 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 the market traders, bring more food into the, you know, into the market and stuff like that, reduce the cost of food. People easily fall for it. 
So people don't really go deep into it. And that's why they continue to use that Ministry of Agriculture to, 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 to kill the economy of Nigeria. That single ministry alone. So when they talk of Orosai report, please, let's say the way it is, yes, it is a good thing to reduce the cost of, the cost of governance, but you are doing it the wrong way. Let's just say the way it is, you are not real. First of all, you started with 48 ministries, 48 ministers. If you are, if you are really serious about that, you don't need more than 25 ministries at, at most for you to operate. So we just... We just leave it, leave it at, at you know at that. But at least to bring out the real facts and the real numbers for people to know that these people are not really serious about what about what they are talking about, you know. And then I will I will I will just touch on the other you know areas you know briefly. And the guy that was talking about comparing that guy that was comparing you know, Mr. The Nigerian uh, president traveling with his family members and comparing that with other countries. That is just, it's so sickening. That's why you say Nigeria is a country of psychophants. See, this, this is just, and it is just a psychophant. In fact, it's, it's a psychopath comparing Nigeria. I, at least I don't know of other countries. It's not that I can't, I, can't, I can't get it or get the information or research on get it, but at least I did, I, I did the research on the country where I live, where I am a citizen, here in Canada. I did that. The Prime Minister of Canada, so don't tell people that boo-boo. When he's traveling, he pay. Whenever he goes with, even his children as at six, six years ago, his, they are minors. I think one or two of them now, maybe, but most, most of his children are still minors. He pay. And guess what? When he's traveling on persona, he has to buy economy tickets. Economy. That is the guidelines, the Canadian guidelines of the prime, prime ministerial expenses. He buys economy. Yo, if you are living in UK, please do your own research. Let us know. If you are in America, please tell us too. Let us know. So let it come from the people that are actually living there. I'm saying my own now. So that these people can go and enter house and shut up and stop comparing the uh, apple with oranges. Very rubbish, very nonsensical. You know, com 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 comparison, as if you are talking to people, as if this is Nigeria of the 70s, when people don't, don't read. You just come out and tell them, and they just, they, they, they just take it. The president, the prime minister, is economy ticket, not even, he has to buy economy ticket. And if he pays for the food for his children, who are minors, Mr. Tinumbu, last month or the other about he went to France for two weeks. At which expenses? At least they told us that it was a personal trip. It was a, like, like a rest. Did, he, did, he, did Mr. Tinumbu pay for, his, for that trip from his own pocket? What comparison are you making? So please, these are just psychophants. They are psychopaths. They, they is all food for the belly. The same thing with Mr. Ambode coming out now saying that uh, they're trying to give, Mr. 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 Ambode is looking for soft landing. He's looking, he's looking possibly for an appointment. That's all. He's been sidelined now. He's a politician. He's been sidelined now for more than five years now, going five years, six years now. He wants to get back into the mainstream. How can you that fought against Tinubu in 2019, 2019 that they, 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 they rigged you out of APC in 2019. And we know your position up till 2022. And now you are saying that Mr. Tinumbu is not responsible. We know who you are. We know you are, you are, you are just looking for a soft landing. That's, that's just what it is. And finally, I will just say this on, uh, let me say this on NLC. I just compare them with Nigerian police. I always say it here. I don't trust the NLC. I don't trust the Nigerian police. So whenever you see Nigerian police doing anything good for me, I will question it. I always question it on the basis that there is always an ulterior motive. Nigerian police just cannot come out and do anything clean and clear without any motive behind it. If you don't question that, you are on your own. When you just look at it on the surface, they go to go and arrest somebody, you think they are being, just go deeper. You will know that there is always, Nigerian police just don't act. There's always something behind it. Same thing with the NLC. 
they just don't act. There's always something behind it. So I'm not surprised them calling up their their you know this this protest. I'm not I'm not surprised at all. I'm finally on Mr. Schwab. I would just Mr. Schwab that went to Abuja, you know, request for his own certificate of return. I just have this advice for him. Mr. Schwab, just go to court. Go to court and get it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Elvis. Let me let me let me let me leave it. Let, let, let me leave it there. For your submission, I have to give you that long time because thank you very uh, much. I appreciate it. Your submission Thanks, was very important. I don't want it, I, I never wanted to cut it short. Thank you, sir. Please, please sir, can, can, I, I, can, I, can I can I can I suggest him for 30 seconds if you allow me? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, my brother, you were speaking about Mr. Shaibu just now. I, I just want to put it to you. Shaibu has been part of the looting machine of Abaseki. He has no case. He has no case to present. He has been part of the wickedness going on in those states. Gale Gale project was part of it. Uh, international cargo airport that never came to pass. He is part of it. I didn't tell about security policies because he kept quiet. He was That's enjoying fine. it. Allegedly. That's fine. Let allegedly. Go to court now. Allegedly, yeah, he has yeah, more than 20, 20, uh, 27 petrol stations across the country. Yeah, and other I, businesses. I, I think him so, asking him asking him Shaibu, to go to court. It just, it's just a sarcastic way to tell him that. Uh, yeah. Prove it. <laughs> okay. Prove it. Shaibu if, for me. Have, Shaibu for me is one is one of the political deadliest criminal allegedly in in the state politics right now. Uh, you. If you if you know if you know they rigged him out, you should go and prove it in court. So, Mister Jonathan has asked you, tribal, go to court. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, Mr. Alex, thank you very much for that uh, quick uh, response to that. I appreciate every one of you, my wonderful people. Guys, press on the like button, help us to share. Let me call on the next person to speak to us. Uh, the second person on the panel today is Mr. Consign. Mr. Consign, it's good to have you on the show. Good evening to you, sir. You have eight minutes. Please talk to us. Okay, you are not there. I'll just move on. I can't wait for people to take time to unmute themselves. Please, let's just move on. Augustine, thank you very much for your time with us today. Good evening to you. Please, I'd like you to talk to us. Good evening to you once again. Okay, thank you, Niger Watch. Good evening, everybody. Please, all protocols duly observed. Um, what was it? The Hello? Yes, can you? I think I'm coming out loud. Can I? Yes. Yes, you are good, Augustine. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, the short. The Sorry, short Augustine. Uh, Mr. Najawash, I've been taking to number last. Uh, yes, yes. The, I, don't, I don't know why, but don't worry. After Augustine, I'll bring you in. You talk. I think Go I will comment. Okay. I'll just be brief. Why? The short video clip shown by one chap from Abia about the thieves. The three governors that ruled that led, led Abia since 1999, Ojo Zakalu, eight years up to 20, 2007, Teodoji from 20, 2007 to 2015, then uh, Okeze Bazo from 2015 to 2023. Yes, they were, they are, they are clearly, they stole the money of Abia State. There's no doubt about that. But one thing I will, and then now we have Alex Oti. One thing I want to point out from there is that Abia has been a forgotten state. Abia used to be the dirtiest capital, the state, the dirtiest place in Nigeria. People show videos of it every time. So it so happened that they gave up hope. But now look at, at least they blessed the trail. They've pioneered the 24 hour electricity in Nigeria. Although I'm expecting within a year to two trains or before the next five years, some other state must have either gone, must have either accomplished their own or in advanced stage of uh, finishing up because I do not think that Abia should be the only place or Abia. There are 36 states, at least 12 states in the next five years should embark on it. And then the good thing about that thing again is that, uh, say it can be expanded in other way. I mean, it can be stepped up. The fact that it's having, it will serve nine local governments of Abia State means that it can be extended to Umuahi and then to the northern part because it's in the southern part. So I'm using it to call on some states. I know some state governors have been performing very poorly. And then in some states where the citizens must have lost hope, 
let them look towards Abia. Abia used to be the worst, but now, if power generation makes you number one, Abia has is now number one. So nobody should lose hope. You never know what is around the corner. I will now call on the, the election this year is only in Edo State. So let them, like uh, Niger, what you say, let them not vote for use pity. They have to. It might not be exactly like what is happening in Abia, but let there be a drastic change. There is now a signpost where people can look up to. If Abia can do it, so many, it's not the richest state. Look at Lagos, look at Rivers. Look at Delta, look at Aquaibom. At least those these four states, in terms of revenue from fax, they are, I mean, okay, minus Lagos. I think Aquaibom collects the highest, followed by Delta and then Rivers. Look at Bayelsa. They're all getting money. So, and all these uh, Niger Delta states, it's only about application and being uh, very prudent. So, I congratulate Abia, I congratulate Bat in Nigeria, and I want a challenge. I want other states to follow suit. There is no point saying that only one state will have it. They said in a family in which one person is rich, is still a poor family. So Nigeria is still a very dark country, no matter the fact that Abia may, Abia may be enjoying 24-hour electricity. As long as other states are still not, Nigeria is still dark. So let them take up the challenge. Then, um, um, what is it called? Dollar may exchange for two four thousand naira by the end of the year. You see, the thing about economics is something. That's why there is no way economics is a, is a simple subject, but it requires common sense. It's not like science in which later you change this, you discover cure for malaria, tomorrow, another disease. It's just demand and supply. It's just demand. All of a sudden now, if there, there are cement, maybe 100 million, maybe something like 1,000 shipload of cement in Nigeria, the price will crash. Because the supply is excess, therefore the demand is the supply have a strip demand, therefore the price naturally will crash. But if in a twinkle of an eye, the only number see, there are not more than hundred thousand bags of cement all over the country, a bag a bag may sell for one million because of the demand. So that is economics. So say the naira cannot appreciate when you don't export anything. I listen to people be make analysis and did the same. If you import something in Ghana, it is cheaper. The same Ghanaian, Nigerian people that are in Nigeria, they import it in Ghana. Reason being that when you bring it to Ghana, the ship going back to China or wherever carries yam or anything to drop in one other country in Europe or this. But in Nigeria, they go empty. So you have, you have to pay extra tariff for that. And then being in business, you have to add it on. They pass it on to the customers the way they say. So in Nigeria, oh, we don't, we are not productive. The only thing we export is crude oil, and they are be, it is being stolen. So how do how do you how do you help your naira? How do just tell me how do you help your naira? The only thing Nigeria we say, okay, customer, it's like you have bags of garden in your shop. People are waiting. Oh, gas sell for me and sell for me. So okay, give me how many bags do you want? Five. Or you give him five bags. You collect money. You are exchanging money for bags of garden. In Nigeria, what we do is that we take dollar for crude oil going out. It will enter into government post, then go to central bank. Any PC will remit it to central bank. Central bank will now forward it to Ministry of Finance. They will now share it according to the state true fact. But in this case now, it's being stolen. So those ones that are stolen is not accounted for. So it's only little that people are now sharing. So there is no way. That's why Peter, what Peter B was saying, the vast agricultural land, because he knows that whatever whatever they are stealing our, in the crude oil, if we are exporting it, something, and this is directed to the farmers, the yams we buy in the UK from made in Ghana or produce of Ghana, it's the farmers that in, uh, get the money. It's not the government that pays them, because it's their feed. They pay only for carriage. The business people from UK will go there and then buy it from them and bring in. So that is the farmers are making money, but in Nigeria, nothing. Coconut, I bought this evening from Ivory Coast. Where can you, what can you buy from Nigeria? 220 million people. So I don't think what Ozeko may say is in order. It might be, it might not be. But even if he predict 20,000 to the, to the Naira, I won't doubt it. Because Naira is falling like a dry leaf from an Iroko tree. Nothing will stop it. The wind can help it fall better, but it can be start dancing until... Such a time it will get to the ground. So that you can't stop it. The only way you can stop Naira is, okay, 
stop oil theft so that our export will increase. We get a little bit of money so that we won't be depending on uh, diaspora Nigerians are brought to bring in dollar. So and then, and central bank will be having their own dollar from NNPC. And then we export all that things, but it's not there. So Nigerian economy is just a, is up in the winds. You can predict it easily. And then the other one, people will be asking uh, Obasa, I mean, Pete and um, Tinubu to state exactly what Nigerians are going to gain by implementing a Ronsai report, all those things. Well, that is a fake criticism. Ordinarily, they should be able to do this because that is giving people confidence. Part of the deal is, part of our government is that we don't know what they do. If you can, this is what they call communication. Oh, you are doing this Ronsai report because you want to merge, merge this, merge this, merge this, scrap this. What money are you saving? In Nigeria, people talk about because they will say you, you lose you lose money. In economics, that's what they call income. If you demand for higher income, you must show proportionate productivity. Income and productivity, that is the way it is. Just like in any factory, say you are working for a, a, a private firm and they say they are paying you every month, they are paying you 200,000 naira. It means you are producing more than 200,000 because ordinarily what you produce, if it's maybe 200,000, it means they're just paying you what you produce. They don't gain anything. So you are putting more. In Nigeria, I don't know whether in the ministry, some people say if you go to the ministry, you see people loitering around, nothing doing. Why not retrain them? Not that you are retrenching them. You say, I want to redeploy them to schools, retrain some who would like to go into teaching, who would like to go into a government guaranteed scheme in farming. There's a way you do it. You import tractors. Innocent is there. If Innocent can manufacture cars, he can manufacture tractor. Give him a prototype. Say, do it for us. But, you know, with imagination, you can rule a country. Without imagination, people just there to do themselves the way they like. Now, look, at we, we borrow money to live flamboyant life. That's not good. So, Nigeria, to me, to me in that aspect, the government should be able to explain their actions to the people just to engender confidence and then to people will now buy into what they are doing and be able to contribute. Criticisms make you stronger. I don't really think if you, but particularly when you are in public office, it's even good you, are you, they criticize you, then you come out to explain, say, well, some people may be criticizing from a very ignorant position. Then you explain it to them, say, look, we thought about it. We thought about that. By the way, government is not supposed to falter because the resources of the country, both home and their way, belongs to you. You can call on the best brain any part of the world. The president is calling you. You need, you need you for a dinner, a breakfast. After that, you say, look at this policy we want to implement. The person will make input without knowing that you've consulted another person. This is how you do it. In the end, everything, because the box stops at your table, you take the credit. But here and people are still practicing and if you criticize, they say it's election trauma. Because you lost the election, it's a trauma. I don't know. Um, what is the other point I wanted to say? The idea of uh, Ibo Hossein releasing, I think we've over, we've uh, be, that is uh, that has been overflogged. Go government, let them do what they want to do, but they must know that they are playing with fire. I mean, this is quite unbecoming. I've never had the, I've never, ever, I've never come across. A country where you, you don't believe in your judicial system. You tried somebody up to Supreme Court. Then you want to go and start all over again. That is unbecoming. That's why people are annoyed. If even people that do not identify with Inland they cannot be for these days they are they are bitter. Because you can't do this. What really are you doing? Ibo host said you release him. Imagine what he's saying. Everybody is now saying, and you are still keeping him there. I don't, I don't, I don't really see the meaning of all this. But well. Some people will come with their uh, never idea, but all I believe is that if you pass me through the law court and you breach my fundamental right, you can't start, you can't build legality on the foundation of illegality. Taking man the cannot back to Kenya and then apply for extradition. Already you've you've broached you breached his fundamental human right. And I repeat again, yes, I am not clear. The other day I, I think I was saying I beg, Nigeria broke diplomatic relations with Britain. Or Britain broke diplomatic relation with Nigeria in 1984. If you uh, by 5th July 1984, when they attempted to um, uh, um, kidnap Omar Oduka and call him diplomatic baggage, when the team failed at I think it was Stansted Airport using Israeli intelligence, it failed. Britain they debated it at the House of Commons. The then Nigerian High Commissioner to London 
was called uh, Anthony Hananea. Britain has to send him away. Say so we said, tell him to leave the country, and then they record their own ambassador from Nigeria. So that is breaking diplomatic relation. It happened here. It happened because of that Omar Udiko case, and it was under Buhari. And the same thing happened again. Nigeria, we should learn a lesson. You can't be using wickedness when you are in public office. The law, they said, it is better you allow a guilty person to be set free than to punish the innocent. It is better. Oh, he, he, told, he said, well, but we don't, I can't be able, let him go. That is the law than for you to hold somebody who is innocent. So that is the same thing Nigeria is doing again. And that's why Britain is as if they know they never wanted it to happen in their soil because they have a hand in it. They don't want it because it's a very, very shameful thing for a country to behave that way. You can do it. You could have extradited. Just write a letter and then tell the attorney general. Tell the ambassador to Kenya, in Nigerian ambassador to Kenya, contact the attorney general, tell them this is what your country wants. You sign the treaty. Nobody knows about it. And then you, you do what you want to do. Is the normal thing. Then you start your procedure. Then to do it secretly and then you are holding the person. And somebody will now come and be telling me, well, if somebody say evil is evil, may evil visit the person. I don't see the, I don't see it at all. So this in the Kasata, sometimes when I remember it, people think I take it personal. Yes, it will be personal because it tells me that what is the whole purpose of education when you can't apply it? Why do you make a law when you can't apply it? That's why in Nigeria, leave, um, somebody should bring up Electoral Act 2022 or so. When they said if you submit a fake document to INEC, you are disqualified. Tinubu submitted a fake, a fake degree certificate to INEC and he's still there. The Englishman will tell you, why make a rule, a law, which you know you cannot enforce? So this is a waste of time. Why all this? And we are talking of good. What if Binta, Justice Binta has said in Nande Kanu guilty, sentenced to life imprisonment? People would have said, you see it. Tried him, they set him free, discharged. Nigeria held him for months before they appealed. At the appeal, it took year, it took almost more than a year for them to decide the appeal. Yet they said, discharged. And you are still holding him. Why? Somebody, people, when people start reading different types of me into it, and people will start be talking. This is the Nigeria we are. Yet, somebody in this, it happened before us last week or last two weeks. The first lady of the country, somebody was calling for him to be, for her to be, a, a, I mean, deleted. Am I lying? Did anything happen to that person? And this is a country where we are. Somebody will tell me, I have, I have to love Nigeria, or I'm tearing Nigeria. I don't like it. Nigeria is just a, look, it's becoming a joke. To be honest with you, it's becoming a joke. Tinubu should not inherit anybody's problem. Man, they kind of should be self free as a, and they let, him, let them pay him compensation as, as, a, as a granted to him by Omoya High Court for invading his premises. You cannot be enjoying your leave. All you needed to do was, if you feel he break a law, Ozekome said it here, you have the lawyers, you call the lawyers, say, look, we need, we need uh, call the lawyers representing him. So please, we need you at the diseases with your client. We have a discussion. It's as simple as that. Meanwhile, the entire country belongs to you. You can, you can put security all over the country, every airport. Then you do what you have to do. All Buratai said as a full animal was, we saw a trailer load of arms. Till today, they've never shown a trailer. Where is NTA doing? Nobody should say, why did you invade? They say, oh, there was trailer load with the helicopter, everything. I mean, sometimes when Nigerians do this type of thing, when you go through this type of trauma, you start to ask yourself, what really, what really, why are all these things happening? Why, why is there personal wickedness towards anything Igbo? Why? Why is there personal wickedness towards anything Igbo in Nigeria? People are asking this question, asking why? What did the chap to do? Why? Why anything personal? How many Fulani headsmen has been caught and paraded and tried like this? Who has ever been tried from the High Court to the Court of Appeal, to the Supreme Court, then back to High Court again? Has it ever happened in any part of the world? Please, I'm announcing today a cash prize. Let me just say it, 100 pounds. Neither watch. Or let me upon my knee prevail on this. 100 pound for somebody to come. Please, please put it here. If you like Niger Watch, I make the money, pay it to your account, 100 pound, keep it. Whoever brings evidence that there has been in Nigeria where you try somebody from High Court, Court of Appeal, to Supreme Court, then back to High Court. Let the person take. What sort of nonsense is that? I mean, I'm so bitter about it. 
Every day we keep talking about the same thing. What sort of wickedness is this? Ibo man can rule Nigeria, yes. Allow him to go. No. Must we be must we be slaves? Must we be slaves? But thank God that with the with the effort of Abia State Governor and Professor Baten Naji, there is now a difference between knowledge and know-how. And Indibo has demonstrated it. Nigeria have go, should have gone far than all this type of animosity. I'm, I'm serious. Today is 20, 28th of February. Every, the world can hear me. If you can provide the evidence that there has been a Nigeria, mention it in Nigerian court, that has been tried from high court to, to uh, court of appeal, from appeal to Supreme Court, from Supreme Court, for whatever offense, it will not, it will not, it will not be terror, anything at all. Let me know. Why should this type of thing be happening? Thank you. All right, um, Augustine, um, I can see you got emotional there. Yeah, I understand. This, when you're talking about a situation that is affecting us, sometimes it can be like that. But I still strongly believe that Tinubu will release uh, Nabdi Kano. I, I don't know. I will stand by that. I strongly believe that. The person that arrested Nabdi Kano, Nabuari, very soon, Tinubu will release Nabdi Kano. As we all are talking about it right now, it's better. It's really good. Let's continue to echo it. Uh, it will be free soon. But meanwhile, let's move on to the next person. I'd like to call on August consign now. If you are available, sir, please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Good evening to you. Yeah, good evening. Good day, my brother. From Thanks, where sir. we are, you know. Good evening, all the whole panelists, commentators. May God bless all of you. And uh, I started to do, I thank uh, CM with that about uh, the issue of Nandekan. I don't think I have to go into that again. God bless you for doing that. And uh, Jonathan, Mr. Jonathan, you really did on the Nisaro report. You really did a good job on that. That was what I also have listened to say about that, you know. Um, honestly, my listening today is uh, concern today is about these people who goes about claiming they're eating a big meat or eating big food, big food on internet. I think I said this thing before. This internet has become undoubted, you know. People are doing stupid things there. You don't go there and say you are eating big food, things are good for you. Things are not good anywhere in Nigeria. That's the truth of the matter. In Ebola, everywhere, every nothing, nothing is good there. People are suffering, and some people come to the to internet to make some stupid noise and comments that's too bad if you are eating if you are eating if you have a go a, a, a full of this in a cattle in your a, um, cow in your house it's for you it's not for others the the people abroad are sending money every day for you people and people are coming to this and say things are good for you you don't make this enough for other people politicians today who are having the money they're not even doing that that's why sometimes i look at nigerians uh, they, they say we go to school we didn't go to school People are not educated there. Because if they are educated there, they cannot be hailing their, hailing their killers, hailing the politicians. People carry bags for them. People do many things for them because they're not educated. You see journalists hailing the, if a, journal, if a government do something good, they say government have done something. What did the government do? That's their, their job. Their job is to do that, not you coming to help them. No, they have done. You see police, yesterday, today I was listening at uh, the SRI, they say police, what did police do? That police that you give these people water, you don't know who gave them the water to give these people. It's the police that give them that water to give to those people. You see? So it's very, very unfortunate. It's very, very bad. People are, we are eating, we are eating. What are you eating? Eh? These e-boats that are doing this, they must stop it. That is not how to go in a country. It's very, very bad. I don't like that, honestly. You see, I, I don't. And then the issue of the protest, it's not that the e-boats are not going to protest. The Igbos are saying, we're not going to be the first to start the protest. We know where protests used to start. It's usually Lagos. If the protest start there, there is a... People protest. Even these protests yesterday, every people, all the whole all nationalists protested yesterday. But the problem is that if, if, if these people start now, they'll be wide. That's the problem. You see? So nobody is saying that the Igbos cannot protest. Even anybody said that, I think that person doesn't know what he's talking about. For me, I don't support that. I support the protest. Everybody must protest. Because if you're not protesting, you are giving kudos, uh, kudos to continue to do what he's doing. 
You see, he'd be happy that say, the people say they're not going to protest. But that's not the issue. The issue is that we, we are saying that let, let the protest start where it used to start. Let others will join. Nobody is not afraid of going protesting in Nigeria. There's nobody that should not protest. On the issue of Abia, even, you see, the Igbos have not have sort of go, go, good, go, good, go, good government, you know, good or good people that to rule. We, uh, Mr. Evi, say, Minute uh, history and so on and so forth. You know, I want to t talk to you about about uh, Mr. M uh, M Sambake. If you go and read the history, you know what the man did in the state. The man was one of the best governors of this country I've ever produced. When he was in Imo, when he was there, the, his, it's not the party that was ruling, but he was able to construct good roads in Imo state. All those roads are still today. That's still. There was uh, pipe bone water. We used to sell pipe bone water. There was nothing like uh, this in the day, a borehole in Imoste at that time. Nothing. Electricity was good. The industries were functioning. At, at, at Imoste, the uh, pump was functioning very well. Money was coming out from there. Big money. And I bought the same thing. Shoe industry, the same thing. Many industries. People were working. You see, the man, he goes to Segare. Sagari was MPN. He goes to him, need and I'm, I'm begging for him, crying. Say, please, I need money. I need money. What the money to be to, 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 to do things in Imo State? That man never had any house after that. He was like in Nyerere. You see? And I said the other time here, these governors that, that ruined the Abia, they're supposed to be in jail. If that today, for example, we have our own, Igbo have their own uh, state. Those governors must be in jail. Not only must, not only that people, even those governors of uh, Imo State, the, the, the ones that came after Mbaku, all of them will be supposed to be in jail. They didn't. They have not done anything for Imo State. Even Anambra, Ijimo, but all of them, they didn't do anything. Maybe and even Soludona. Only Mbaku, only this uh, Obi, Obi that is the one that did anything for for for, for Anambra people. Omahe, yes, Omahe tried until he went, went to this evil party APC. You see, so for me, I commend uh, what will be uh, what he's doing. I think he's following the full step of Mbakwe and the Obi, and so that's what the full step is following. May God continue to bless him as he work for the people of Abia. But my my this is uh, no, Mike Ozokeme. Well, Mike Ozokeme, I don't think the money will reach that four thousand, but the future doesn't look bright for Nigeria because of uh, this issue of money. That money, because the country, I've seen, listened to analysts, I've listened to them very very well. The country is not exporting. The country don't have much. The government is broke. So to sustain this Naira and they make people the Naira in a good shape, it's going to take time. It's going to take many years. When including this particular government we have now. And that's my even come here today to talk. Who and who? How did Nigerians let this to happen? To allow APC to rule Nigeria again? You see, Nigeria is the one that bringing evil to itself by allowing APC to rule again. And what Buhari did to Nigerians, destroy the economy, destroy everything in Nigeria, and they still allow APC to rule. If that APC was not there today, at least the new government could have probed this APC government. They could have done that, and the more money could have been retired from them. And things could have set in good. Even the National Assembly couldn't have been like this today. If that you have a good government, a new party or a new people that are ruling the country today. So it's a, the, at, like I said earlier, the people of Nigeria are not educated. They can go to school and they, that school have no wisdom. That school, they didn't get any knowledge from the school that they attended. Because if you, they have brain, they can never allow people like APC to rule Nigeria again. APC come with a propaganda, the propaganda party. All everything they do is evil. Evil, that's what they do. Evil. And for Nigeria, I, I still ask again, who? Who? Which people allow this APC to rule Nigeria? Because if that we have seen a good, if that is a new a new people that are ruling Nigeria today, honestly, we, can, we should we could have been start seeing small light. But now we are not seeing light. We are going back to where we came from. We are we are going back to more than hundred years, because the country have no money, and the country cannot run with, without money. 
You see, people can claim like uh, but what, what this man said. Uh, it's a t -t 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 uh, oh. My my brother, this eight minutes is it like this? Oh. <laughs> yeah, my die don't finish. Go rest. Let me talk, talk about. Let me finish something. <laughs> oh, this was, uh, my brother. This was okay. Me, what was okay? Me said, you know. Well, I'm confused. That it's okay. <laughs> wait, wait. You see. This government, what is, good. what is the government, <laughs> this is Tinibu, Tinibu come and what is employing, employing is eight, 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 eight. Those who can come and uh, talk for him, those eight, 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 is this how a government runs? But I don't blame Tinibu, honestly, I don't blame him. I blame the Nigerians that bring the party back to government. In, with the Buhari, they see what in Buhari, then they put again Tinibu that is worse than Buhari. So okay. for them to see the light, I don't know. God bless you until next time. Ah, thank you, thank you on that concern. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. Um, to be honest, I, me myself, you know, uh, I will support on that. Normally, APC is supposed to be scrapped permanently in Nigeria. They have caused us what? a lot of pain. You know. So, well, let's move on. I appreciate you all, my people. Thank you very much for your time with us. Please do your part. Press on the like button. Let me call on the next person, which is give us a uh, uh, Black Panther. Black Panther, please talk to us, sir. Thanks for your patience. You have eight minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Niger Watch. Uh, may God continue to put the garment of grace continually upon you so that you continue to excel faster than the speed of light. May God continue to give you give divine health to function in your position which you have been destined to occupy. I want to say here, mom in the diaspora, God will bless you. The garment of grace that God has put upon you will never go, will never be dirty. It will be whiter than the snow. May God give you, grant you divine health all the days of your life. May God bless you, ma. You are a Amen. good, you are a good mother. You are a replica of a good mother. If every mother has all over Nigeria can do what you are doing, we wouldn't be having all these kind of issues in Nigeria. At least we'll be able to manage it and curtail it. Uh, Mr. Alex, God bless you, sir. God bless you. To all the viewers, may God bless you all. Thanks for sitting down, tightening your, your, your sofa, watching and seeing us spill out the good news, the truth behind the truth. And we are here to speak the truth. And I want to say here today that when you stand on the word of God that says, he is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He never changed. On this channel, we will never change because we are standing on the foundation of God and will never change. So anybody that comes here to contradict that change, he can only spill what he has, but we will never change in telling the truth to the Nigerian people, in speaking the truth so that the nation, our dear nation, will change. Nobody is more Nigerian than anybody. I want to say here that I will start from uh, Professor, our dear Professor Ezekume. God bless you, sir. I know you are listening to us. May God continue to pour, pour on you wisdom upon wisdom so that we as your student we sit down to listen to you so that we we'll grow up in the way which you are too to continually speak the truth my dear uncle i want you to do us a favor please i my am on my knee Please continually speak on the foundation of our dear country. We need to change the foundation. We need to build a foundation so that anything that is laid on that foundation 
cannot, that thing I laid cannot bring down the foundation. Rather, we will continue to build upon it so that we become stronger and we take our place in the world. Uh, yesterday, I was listening to every one of us, and I'm so glad and so pleased. I am blessed being among those that are standing on the pinnacle of truth all over the world. And you people are a replica of a great patriot of your own fatherland. And I thank all of you for standing on the side of truth. You will always, you will always receive favor wherever you go. May God bless you. I'm, I am so glad being among you people. I am happy. Every day I come here, I am so happy. Despite all the rigmarole that comes. But we should not be able to deter from continually saying the truth. What is happening in Abia State? The child that was rejected, the child that had been battered all over Nigeria, even Satan is speaking in favor of that child that had been battered. You see, there was one thing that happened in Nigeria. It happened in the West. One man rose up in the person of Chief Awolowo. He brought the first TV station, Terrestrial Station, to Africa. And that TV station took place in, in the West. And the West became the pride of the nation. Every other state, every other country continue on that tragedy and build on it. The child that had been battered the tide that have been flogged down in the east rise up in Abia State. And today, what that child has spoken to the, to the entire nation that we can do it and give our nation 24 hours light. But that child was beaten and rejected. He went back to his own town and did what he has spoken to the entire country. And now we all can rejoice. I am so glad. That what they say it is impossible, it is possible. That is why when PO said anything Nigeria is possible, Nigeria will change. I believe it when we stand on the truth. Thank I thank uh, the Labour Party governor in Abia State. May God bless you, sir. You have continued what many we sit on that in that strong seat and say no i don't want to continue with this project i want to do mine you have continued with it and you have started in a very good foundation and may god continue to give you the wisdom to excel and bring the state to his, to his optimum state i want to say here now that we all are talking about onosoya i will not go into albado and his uh, children going to uh, i don't even care about that he is a president, whatever. Anytime he says something, he will also go back and eat his vomit. So that is them. I know I don't want to, I want to really delve on the issue of how Nigeria will come out of this quagmire. The only way Nigeria will come out of this quagmire is to stand for a new constitution. I stand for us to come together as a family and speak the truth to ourselves. Some of us might come here and say, oh, I have detravelized myself. That is a fallacy and that is a lie from the pit of hell. You cannot detravelize yourself because you came out from a tribe. If you detravelize yourself, then then you're, 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 you, you wouldn't say anything about your tribe. You begin to talk. You came from a tribe. Tribe is not evil to a nation. What is there is that we should respect each other. That is why when our, our Madam Rita said, you cannot, he made one statement, that you cannot be tribal blind. It is fundamental. You can never be tribal blind. And when you come here to say, I have detribalized myself, 
Are, are you more Nigerian than any other person? We all here will love Nigeria. That is why we come here to speak the truth. And if we continue to dive away from the truth, look, if Ono Soya, let's say for instance, Ono Soya, uh, uh, pro, what he wrote for us, I know is a very beautiful book. White book is very beautiful. But the kind of politicians we have, Nigeria does not have a strong institution. Nigeria does not have a strong foundation. We are very shaky. We are on a tiny rope that can be that can be broken anytime. Look at the look at the dollar rate in the market. We are not producing. I'm not saying how we come. It will they will shrink governance. What about the money that is gotten from that shrinking of the government? Where who who is in charge of that money? It is this is still it is this is still the same people that stole the mandate of the Nigerians. It is still the same people that allocated 162 million to buy Jeep cars, SUV cars for themselves. It is still the same people that gave themselves millions of naira as they were going for their uh, Christmas anniversary. We, the Senate president, unknowingly to him, his mouth was faster than his thought. I say to everyone, if we continue to speak the truth, that which we have spoken, we rise up and take over everything. So I beseech every one of us, please continue to speak the truth so that we know where we are going. Every other thing, every other thought, we follow suit when we have a good foundation. When we come together, and prefer a solution to ourselves and prefer a law. You cannot be in a country where you have two judicial systems, one in the north, one in the south. You cannot be in a country where you hate each other. We need to come together and respect one another, irrespective of the tribe you come from, irrespective of the geographical location you come from. We should learn to respect each other. And how do we do that? It is when we come to a round table and talk among ourselves. With different tribe, with different mark on the face, we need to respect each other, and it is only can only be done when we sit on a round table, so that we can let our past be bygone. Thank you, Mr. Nigeria Watch. May God strengthen you and uphold you in whatever things you are doing in your life. In Jesus' mighty name, I rest my case and continue in the second section. Second section. Mr. Elvis. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just want to ask uh, Mr. Black Panther a question with a, with a, with a short comment. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah Mr. Black Panther, um, you talked about the new constitution. I, I was expecting you to say that. I know you are passionate about that. And, and thanks, you did mention that. So, but are you aware that a constitutional amendment is process is going on right now? And uh, so what role should those of us that believe that the constitution of Nigeria is, let's just put it in a very straightforward way, is just rubbish, uh, what role should we, should we play in this constitutional amendment process that has just begun? To me, we have a lot of role to play if they give us the, 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 the channel, because they have to open a channel for us so that what we deliver, we get to them. But if they don't open channel to us in diaspora to make our own contribution, then, then we'll just sit down, we'll talk on the media, and you know how they are, they don't listen to us. But let me just, <laughs> let me say this, right. let me say this, so that you be well, well, no, you be, be quick, thanking be quick. you. Just one statement. You cannot amend a constitution that is not written by you, and have a way forward. Simple. Thank you. Thank you, um, Black Panther, for your submission. And God bless you. Thanks for the prayers as well. I appreciate you all, my people. Let me quickly move on to the next person. I wanted to get to everybody on time. Um, give us a mandate. Thank you very much for your time with us. Good evening to you, sir. Please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Mr. Helvis. 
Uh, good evening to you, to the panelists, and then to everyone in the comment section. Uh, good evening, good evening. Thank you for all that you do. God bless everyone. God continue to keep us and keep our country. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the energy. Thank you for everything. God bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, well, yeah, based on everything that uh, has been said today, um, I'll just speak on the uh, recent year's report first. Um, see, so the reason why we have uh, updates on publications and uh, books, uh, literatures, is just the fact that as at when those books were written, maybe some things were not captured and development has come, things have improved. And we have to now, as we live by, as we grow, as things change, the author discover, oh, I need to have this, I need to do this. That's why we, we have updates on publications and, and uh, literatures and books. And you cannot bring um, an outdated document to address the current situation. Because if, you're, if you do that, then you're putting the life of people in danger. You're putting the economy in danger. You're putting, you're putting your country in danger. Because as it stands right now, um, that document is being published uh, for a very, I mean, some few few years ago. And um, based on what we see today in our, in our country, things evolved, have, have gone by and things like that. And we still leverage on this document, which is beautiful. But one thing is, Right off the back, you allocated money. Before you even gave money to buy SUVs, this document was already in place. Before you spend money to go to Dubai, this money, uh, this book was already in place. Before you allocated um, um, different ministers and um, different parastatters, this document was in place. Now, why now? Why now? That document. Give us a mandate. Sorry. Go ahead, ma'am. Give us a mandate. Good evening. Uh, before he went, before he said subsidy is gone, the document was also in place. <laughs> okay. That, 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 that's, that's correct. That document was written in 2012 by Oresonia uh, Committee, a 100 page report. Uh, the report recommends uh, several measures, uh, several things. Uh, I mean, key recommendation from that report um, is just basically on um, how to cut the cost of governance, slashing cost of governance, abolishing um, 38 um, agencies, uh, merging 52 agencies, reverting the law, and then consolidating, doing some consolidation, and then some other things. Now, if it was said then that, okay, we have to abolish it, we have to consolidate it, we have to merge these, but right off the back, you guys are still creating more ministries, then is there a need for that report then? The content of the report may be wonderful, but how wonderful can it be when it cannot address the pressing needs of Nigerians or the pressing needs of the government of the country? And let me say this clearly to the Nigerians. You and I, we don't need in your house. If, for example, daddy was earning one million naira before end of the month, and because things now went, maybe something happened, and daddy now start earning 500,000 500, naira. Nobody is very rocket science for you to now understand that, ah, Mama Ifani, or Mama Chukudi, or Mama Karimu, or Kadri, or whatever you want to call it. Before I used to earn one million, now it's five hundred thousand there are many. How can we slash? What can we do? If you go to market, what can you join together? What, how can you begin to navigate this so that we can manage according to our budget? So the government, they are human beings. They are not robots. The last time I checked, the president in court, but Mahmoud Yakub is a human being. The Senate president is a human being. The Speaker of the House is a human being. The Chief of Staff is a human being. 
those that work in the process, they are human beings. It is a common sense to know that, oh, at this time, the country is bleeding. We don't have enough money. What can we do to begin to cut down costs and then begin to spend based on the material that we have? And according to our resources, but now you implement, you, you brought out the report and your children are already part of the entourage going to Qatar with you. And like Abati said, 20 plus 20, about 40 people going to Qatar. You have the first 20 that will go out, that will go there on 28, and that 20 will go on, on the 29. We know they are gimmicks. Because of what they are suffering, the illegitimacy, they will need some people to go and applaud them when they get to the hall. Whether what they say makes sense, it doesn't make sense, they will need people that will applaud them. Oh, yes, you, they, will, they will need people to clap for them. That is their intention. And for the train of the president... Mr. Give us our mandate, please. Yes. Can I just add something just for 10, 15 seconds? Go ahead. You commit me, yeah. Even the, the the analysis or the example that you gave about the earnings, the household earning of one million dropping to five hundred thousand, as at that two thousand and twelve when this report came out, crude oil, which is our major earning, was hovering around ninety four dollar per barrel to one hundred dollar per barrel. As at that time, two thousand and twelve, that period. So now that crude oil is even far far less. What does common sense, you know, imply there? See, Peter Gregory, be, he, he, any, see, anytime we talk, it's just fortunate that anytime Nigerians talk about governance, ruling, ruling a country or a state, local government, councillorship and all of that, you reference back to Peter Gregory because all of these things he said then is a common sense. Okay, for example, now, the president in court, before he became a president, his own Orlando that he owns cannot do some dealings. All of a sudden now his own Orlando can buy a Jeep. Why? Because if he has now had more power and more resources through what? The Nigerian people. So all of these boogaboos and all of this uh, uh, hide and seek game that they are playing is just to bamboozle Nigerians. But Nigerians are wise. They are wise because we have Nigerians virtually all over the world. Nigerians are all over the world. Qatar, that all of a sudden that news went viral. They don't want you in Qatar. You are now the one who have to go with 40 people to Qatar. Because the, the, the king has the king has, have, has have, have arrived. People can like it did, they did in Dubai, where you see the in, in, in Galili. Start, turn, a minister turned to a traffic water, controlling traffic for the president or the president in court. So for me, it, it's just a way. 20 will go ahead of them, 20 will go with them to applaud the president when he's when he's making a speech. Whether he said it right or not, they will need to back them up. Now, Mike Ozakome, in the simple logic, and everything still boils down on the issue of economics. How do country even stabilize their own currency? And that's why you and I we went to school to go and study economics, the law of demand and supply, balance of trade, trade deficits, all of those things. We went to go study them in school because we need to make our economy work. If you are not producing anything, there is no way your currency can make it. When it comes to international dealings, it, it is never possible. You have to be producing for your, for your currency to be able to exchange in international, international markets. And so because all of this is not happening to Nigeria, our currency will, will continue to go down the drain. It will go down more and more, except something is done drastically. But will these people do it? No. Why won't they do it? They are there for the graphs. 
whatever they can really grab for themselves and their family that is what they are out they are, they are out for they are not out for the common good of the people it's, it's a simple is a simple logic what are we producing if you import from china what do we send back to china if you bring things from america all of okay our brother sending sending cars back to nigeria or maybe sending some things back to nigeria what do we send back to america that will not make our currency to gain demand in the international, international trade. I mean, I, I'll just leave it here for now, and then we'll, we'll come back and speak more. But for Shwaibu, Shwaibu, if you feel that you are you are marginalized and you, you mean business, please go to court. And only the Apata learn from Alex Oti. Begin to consult him now. If possible, go and read Alex Oti's manifesto. Read Peter Gregory of manifesto and see what they did. And the, 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 the gains of Alex Oti in Abia State, let's not forget. If, for example, Inina Oti has rubbish the election, Abia State would have been suffering by now. So as we give credit to Alex Oti, let's remember that woman, that real gem, Nena Oti, for delivering democracy to the pool of Abia. Abia State, I rejoice with you people. Ibo Kwenu, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Uh, my brother, give us a mandate. Thanks for that submission. Yes, Alex Oti, uh, Governor Alex Oti, you know, is the top man right now. Uh, is this well, it's supposed to be your turn, but you, you remove yourself from the screen. You're in the middle of <laughs> the media. I can't add you to the screen because your device is totally turned off, but you are there. I can see you there. But whenever you turn that on, then we'll bring you in. But meanwhile, let me go to Tunaja. Tunaja, it's good to have you here. Thank you very much sir, for joining us today. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Good Tunaja, it looks like you're not available as well. So I'll have to move on to the next person. Uh, Madam Patricia, thank you very much ma, for joining us this evening. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. You have eight minutes. Good evening, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Good man. evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, good evening to the comment session people there. It's great to be here again. Um, was it Mike Ezekibo? Ezekome, yeah, he was the one. Uh, it's absolutely right. You know, that's what we have been saying here all along. That they cannot be blaming the past regime for their failure. So it's a blame game. Every time we call, they call on Avassanjo, they call on Jonathan, they call on this, they call on that. You know, but the thing is, you are on the driving seat now and the leaders don't make excuses. If you're a leader, you're making excuses, you're giving excuses as to your failure, then you are not supposed to be a leader. Leaders are solution providers, you know, answers to issues, pressing issues. They bring answers, they bring things to the table. They always have something to turn the tide around. So if you come in to, to be blaming and apportioning blame on um, the past regime, then you are not capable, you are incompetent, you are not supposed to be there, and uh, you don't know what to do. So um, then the best thing for any honorable, if there's any honor on you, is to say, you know what? I take my hands off this. I'm not competent to do it. I mean, we see this in, um, in countries where that they are comparing themselves to all the time. When it comes to when we, when you call them out to tell them the wrong that they are doing what they're not supposed to be doing, they tell you, oh no, in America, in uh, the India, in uh, uh, UK, in France, in Denmark, in Norway, you know, the prime minister or the whatever uh, does this, they do this. But <laughs> in these places that they are calling, when they find out, when when the prime minister or anybody in a public office 
find out it's not delivery. He or she has not delivery dividends of democracy to the people that elected them. They resign, they step down, they get out from the office, they admit that listen, I don't, I, I can't, I can't do this. I thought I can, but it looks like I can't. So they step down. So what was the big deal for those people that in Nigeria for them not to step down? Must you wait for the whole country to, to, to completely be destroyed because of uh, uh, your pride? Because I see it as pride. If you cannot do something, you cannot do it. Like, uh, is it not wicked? I say, if, in, if <laughs> how do they say? If it doesn't day, it doesn't day. <laughs> if it's not there, it's not there. So there's no point forcing it. It's better uh, at this point, I will, I will call on the president to, to step down. You know, you should step down. Let somebody else take the country uh, ahead. Let somebody else that can steer the ship in the right direction take over. And all these uh, people coming out, people that are uh, stomach infrastructure uh, 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 um, associates of of the of the governor of the uh, president, that are coming out to you know compare and compare Nigeria with. Uh, with uh, um, the president, uh, the, the, uh, when the Dubai or Qatar trip, calling that, saying that uh, Obama and the rest they go with their children. Those children that uh, they they go with, are they able able body children, full able body children, or are they uh, teen, uh, young children? You can see they were young children. You don't take your your hey, son that is already. Over many years, you know, is he is he baby so is he babysitting sitting Shei and the, the other one? Are they babysitting them? Maybe who know? Maybe they are babysitting them because I don't see any reason why I should be following him, following the father to such trips. He's not supposed to be there. It's not a cosa nostra. It's not a family business. You know, this is this is this is a, a, a national thing. You know, he's heading Nigeria, so it's not supposed to be that he carries his uh, able-bodied adult man. That is all. Uh, that guy should. I mean, he should, that guy should be going towards uh, his forties. He should be over thirties. Yeah, he should be in his thirties, approaching forties. So what is he doing there? And you tell me that it's allowed. All this uh, and that guy, the what they call is a little tiger. You are a disgrace to an Urubu, to be an Urubu man. A very big disgrace, because these are the stomach infrastructure people that that need we need to deal with in those states, because in that data state and such all the other states as well. People like you, how can you come out to be defending the, the, the what is not uh, defendable? The people you were comparing, the Obama children that you saw, are, were they children or were they adults? <sighs> For you to tweet such a ridiculous tweet. You know, so um, Nigeria matter is, is 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 so pathetic, and you see people being deceiving themselves and being deceived, deceiving others and being deceived also, because the thing that is in Nigeria and the younger that is there now, they might think they might think okay, now they are eating, mm -hmm. but the government is either for or eat. This one that is now. That's all he can serve. He cannot serve more than that. And after that, what does it do? If they bring naira, naira turn to uh, 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 ten thousand naira to to one dollar, yeah. So tell me, you no know, matter the amount of money you think is amassing now, he will still go broke. He will still go broke. So all these people they are deceiving themselves. That's all I can I can I can say to that. And. Um, Nigerians deserve better than what we are seeing. Alex Oti, kudos to you. Well done. Uh, I believe that uh, you have turned it around. You have made it now two place, two states that I can say, okay, uh, is forging on. The other one, we know that they deprive other states to make it the only tree, the only, the only tree in the forest. Can you imagine? That's Lagos. All the rest, they made them grass. Now only one tree, nice time for that forest called Nigeria. So um, 
they, 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 they took from every other state to make Lagos. And people in Lagos are very happy. Lagos is, uh, yeah, is the, is the best place in Nigeria. Is the, this, is the, that. Shame a lot of them. No, no, they talk the truth. Because I don't see any reason why they will carry other people wealth they can't put for Lagos. No other seaport is in Nigeria. We have seas everywhere. We have coastal line everywhere. All the seaport that in Nigeria, they close all of them down. Airport, airport also. We cannot, we cannot travel. Like I travel now back to Nigeria. I have to sleep in Lagos. Must I sleep in Lagos? Must I? For a, for a half an hour, a, a 45 minutes flight journey? Because I arrive at six o'clock, I can't get flight to fly to my to my own state. It's a shame. All these things needs to change. Because I, you, you're not dealing with uh, even even in, in small small countries like uh, Denmark where I live, even up to how many uh, flight flight is they break. You cannot say somebody land 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 in the airport at eleven p.m. They don't have connecting flight to go to the other 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 states other other uh, regions of the country. That's uh, it's, it's not it's not happening. So all these things needs to be addressed. But we need the right person. So Alice, thank you so so much for turning the table around, for making it look, for showing showing others that uh, despite the oppressors, despite the deprivation, despite the uh, aggressors, that you are different and that you came to work for the people. You came to work for your people, and. And, and that you can set an example for others to look and see. So I'll use this to call on, on the, the, the governor of uh, Delta State, Sheriff Oboravore. Please go and take a look at what is happening in Abia State. We need electricity. You know, the oil that we have gave you, uh, you know, I can't blame you for that, but you've also been in politics. Many of the ones before you, they've allowed them to carry pipeline and take it all the way to the north. They are just sucking the oil, here, draining the whole place. The whole area now is polluted, yet we don't have electricity, we don't have wood, we don't have good school, we don't, I mean, now is your turn. And uh, Deltans voted for you, hence you won. So do, do what uh, OT is doing, turn the whole place around and let Delta people be proud of you. Thank you, Mr. Elvis, for giving me the opportunity. Lovely. Thank you, Mother Patricia, and God bless you, ma. Thank you very much for that submission. Uh, Mr. Eze, she will, uh, I can see you're back again. So you're the last on the panel. I'd like you to give us your submission, sir. Thank you. Good evening to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Nigel Watch. And uh, thank you to all the, all the panelists and contributors and the those who are commenting online. God bless um, you, sir. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be on the panel today, having tried for so many days. And uh, at the verge <laughs> of my giving up, I got in. I don't know how I got in, but I, I had given up. I had one, wanted to say, uh, and uh, that's it. You know, so. Yeah, good to have you here, sir. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. God bless you. Um, I know. Everybody that has spoken has spoken so 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 well. Kudos to everybody. I love all the uh, all the things I've been hearing. I know we are positive people. We are positive Nigerians. We have no other country except that that country called Nigeria for now. But uh, let's I forget, sir. Why not check why I can't super chat? I have tried and tried and I gave up. Okay. But why? You know, what, what was the I issue? I mean, Houston, Texas. Okay. No, I don't no, no. Like to, what I is it telling you when you try? I sent it to you on your WhatsApp. I, I, I did a screenshot and I sent it uh, about two weeks ago. Oh, okay. okay. I think I missed it. I didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. I will do I will do it. I will do it again. You if see, I forward it again. Let if me I see. push the, if I push the, the dollar sign, yeah, uh, well, it says something and it won't open up. So oh, I I did a screenshot and sent to you and say, why can't this open up or something? I, I made a comment. I sent on the on the WhatsApp. But you know, oh, I know you I get yeah, I know you get all kinds of information from WhatsApp. It's easy to 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 miss. Yeah, I missed it. That's. Yeah. That's actually what I wanted to 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 say to say first. Oh, but very sad. On, 
But, but, from the but do you use PayPal? Yes, I do. I yes, have, I yeah. have I have PayPal. Okay, I will put our PayPal link on the private chat now. Okay. All Thank right. you, sir. Come Thank you. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, no problem, sir. Now, concerning Nigerian issue, you know, um, presently speaking, looking at what the, what the trajectory Nigeria is going as at today, I'm not talking about tomorrow, we will not develop. That's my, that, that, that's my conclusion. And they are throwing more things in the society for us to focus on. I call it distractions. There are so many distractions they are throwing every day, including their trips and their children and their families and all kinds of things to remove us from the real thing that I believe the country should be focusing on. If you ask me, I would say there's no hunger in night in in Nigeria. There's no food food shortage. See? Why are there food why, why did it seem that there's a food shortage and, and hunger? Because what we need to deal with have not been been dealt with. The terrorists declared war, but the country is invaded. And the leadership, the leadership, they are complicit. They pay lip services to our security. They don't even care. They don't talk about it anymore. See? The terrorists are in the bushes and in the farms. And they kill, they kidnap, the men, Today in Nigeria, our highways are evil, not accidents, not that the roads are not, are not paved, but that the terrorists and kidnappers have occupied all the, all the highways across the, across the whole, the whole, the whole, the, the whole land. And the government is doing nothing to, nothing to that, to that, which means they are complicit. Okay, I'll let them come out and say that they, that, 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 that they are not. The military, the army will tell you we over we over overwhelmed in Sambisa for in Sambisa forest. But I can say that they are not. Okay, let something happen down south. You see them going there to kill the people and shoot and I mean to buy the people and shoot and, and do and do all kinds of things. The same thing with, with police. Police is not overwhelmed, about two and 20 of them is following either a top businessman or, 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 or politicians all over the, the land. Therefore, you have, and the, their morals are so low, the morals of the military and the, and the morals of the police are so low, so they can't, they, can't do their, they can't do anything. Now, coming to the security of the nation, Israel is overwhelmed with, 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 with terrorism, what they did as at last week, their defense or their security minister, I saw I saw him on deep on, on on TV being interviewed, and he said that they continue to give guns to citizens, but in Nigeria, the only people allowed to carry assault assault rifle are the terrorists, the the flani the flani terrorists, okay. Across the whole, the whole, the whole country. If they see any citizen carrying double, double, double barrel, police will call you for questioning. And double barrel is a, is a, is a hunting gun. See, so because of the things that are throwing in to confuse the people, the people are less focused on what they need to focus on, which is the security first. No economy will grow. No food will grow. No, nothing will grow. In fact, lives uh, to live a life is 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 already difficult because of that single security issue that has not been solved. See, so on the other hand, talking about the the the, the type of where the I mean the the consular amend, amendment that is going on. That's another exercise in futility. It will amount to nothing. 
like somebody said, lawyers have been saying it, there's nothing you will amend in that constitution that will make it a working uh, document that will make the nation to progress. The thing is that in Nigeria, we lie to each other so, so, so much. We lie a whole lot. The government lies a whole, a whole they know the Congress people and the senators know that that constitution is, is, is not going to work. And they know that if they bring in the 1963 cons, 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 constitution, Nigeria will, will progress, but they will be out of, out of picture. So they don't, they don't want that. Um, there are some other issues I needed to comment on, but I had forgotten them and I will stop here. Thank you very much. And God bless you. God bless you too, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thanks for coming around today. Uh, yes, uh, I posted the link on the private chats. God bless you. I don't know why, but I'll. I'll Am I being if you can, had? Yeah, if you can forward that uh, message again to my WhatsApp so that I can see what's the problem. Okay, your network. But nevertheless, I uh, appreciate uh, everyone of you. I'd like to quickly appreciate uh, Mr. Johnson Emmanuel. Thanks for the super chat. Sir. May God bless you. Uh, it's easy for, it's a straightforward thing for some of you to super chat us here. Why few people also complain that uh, is a problem? I don't know. I, to be honest, I, I, I don't All know. of all the things they hit to. Me, I said, I don't super chat again. Why? I don't know. It's, it's, it's with the provider. The provider, pro, not a problem. Yeah, anyway, anybody that can also chat, you can use our paper and take it from there. But nevertheless, uh, the first the first caller of the day. Okay, please, Mr. Shimizu, hold on. Uh, go ahead, mother. Hold on, sir, on the phone. Yeah, I wanted to know the account that you are using. Is it, uh, is it affiliated with Nigeria Banks? Yes. Okay, that's the reason. No, which account? That, what do you mean? You the mean the super chat? Uh, the one with super chat. No, 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 it's UK, it's UK. Okay, so then shouldn't be any problem. No, it's UK, yeah. It's 100% UK. It doesn't have anything to do with Nigeria at all. I thought you were talking about Nigeria account. I was in bank. I've not showcased that one for so long, but I'll do that uh, shortly. Uh, anyway, let me ask you it? something. Uh, Hold on, Mr. Shimizu. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Shimizu. Yeah, I wanted what? To, to say, is anybody in Houston, Texas, or around Texas having the same the same problem or in the program? I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I have the same problem. I'm in Texas. Okay. You see? So it may be because of the region and not actually the... It um, could be, yeah, the account, yeah. It the, could the, be. the account. It may be the yeah, region. It could, it could be because of the region. You are very right. It could yeah, be. So but a lot of a lot of people super chat from America, but the region might be a problem. I don't know. Yeah, you see, if you are in what the what we call New England, New England state, which is uh, connect Connecticut, New York, um, Massachusetts area, New 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 Jersey they have more of their system is more of british orient, oriented if you go there you know that, that that it's not it's not exactly what we have down here in the south see um, okay so Anyways, i don't know i think i think it's because of the it may be because of the region i bet me they leave that region person wants to support me now my <laughs> year region now now that we call problem you know now that's how now now they do maybe they can wait <laughs> now this american now they do fake certificate they say america now now they hinder my blessing <laughs> what if you all this no, one why, why you go in there your blessing america people they super chat at least uh mr no 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 no, no people they super chat from america uh -huh. this is your soul may you go so give us a mandate I give you this assignment. Go and repair that region. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Let's okay, but before, do before we repair the region, Mr. Uh, uh, Chim is Please hold on the phone. Is uh, it can, is it, can you also use uh, maybe use PayPal? I think PayPal. Sure, was, sure, yeah. sure. If he gives me the link, I will use. I will use PayPal. No, I said it is on the private chat, sir. Okay, okay. I haven't gotten to it. I will, I will get. I will get. I will get to it. If I go to it now, I'm. I'm, I'm 
uh, the con I may go off, off offline again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It will log you out. You are right. Some of the panel from America, the the newspaper. Of course, a lot of people from America dispatch out freely is easy. Anyway, let's yeah. let's move on. God bless every one of you, Mr. Shimizu. Thanks very much for the long wait. Uh, please, good evening to you, sir. Talk to us. Yeah, good evening, every good evening, everybody. Good evening, uh, panelists and um, commentators. Yeah, when I just watch, I think you are Mahmoud today. <laughs> How now? <laughs> eh? You never beat anybody cause today. No, I see anybody that call you today. no, not my phone. No, I don't know what they do. This phone, not be my photo. You are the first pe person calling in today. I see, say, a lot of people don't try. Not I be try it, yeah. I try it. I see, you go, you go, you, you went through. I said, okay, I, 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 I will try again. Yeah, that be my fault, sir. Not oh, my well. fault. Thank you, sir. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you need to go and put that phone somewhere it belongs. No, I go to where APC. I'll to where to the window. I got, I got this one from Bala, Bala Blue. <laughs> no, you're not saying that this phone, now you now can cut them during, throughout the, pre, the, the, the campaign season. So maybe that, the, the best true. for the phone. <laughs> thank that's, you, sir. That's true. Please, yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you. I don't watch. Hey, CN, CN is my brother. We are come, we, we came from the same area. Say CN, Chimese is greeting him. <laughs> and that's him. Yeah, and that's him. Um, say, may I greet you I'm from Aguata, so he from Aguata local government, the same place. Ah, now then, now then, me come from now Aguata, now the same people of us come from now. Hmm? Okay, okay, that's true. <laughs> 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 All right, okay, yeah. Um, I just watched that. Like, what you're saying before? I think I said this in three days ago. Mm. People are saying I was so angry about that. I'm evil man, so I. I, I if you say you are not protesting, it can be telling people any any reasonable somebody, any that somebody that have brain won't take his region that is not protest. Because I said it that uh, the one I said I tell you that the 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 price of building materials right away is too much that it can even have a ten million naira to build a bungalow. Eh? It's too much. I, I said it. Everybody should come out and protest. Don't say, oh, you now say, ah, because of they did this. Come on. That side, that, 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 that area. Do, do, that you, do, you, do you know the most annoying part of it, Mr. Shimeze, is that people are now making series of videos, posting it and making jest of the poverty and uh, 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 the hunger that is affecting every one of us right now. Oh, that is sad now. Let me say, huh? Is, is bad. Let me tell you that thing that just doing that thing in for that is kind of um you know we want to pay them back, but it's not the way you're paying them back, but you're paying yourself back too because exactly. nobody's buying things cheap right away. God bless you. Sir. Nobody's getting cheap, cheap, cheap. Nobody's buying anything cheap. Cement is thirteen thousand, fifteen thousand. How much bag will you buy even to do a jammer floor of, of, of your foundation? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? What are they talking about doing? I, I disagree with them. It's not good. Everybody, when protests come out, everybody should come out and protest. Nobody, everybody is buying things costly. So the, the, the election time, yes, Trump is already there. That one, everybody know it. It's, it's a president of Nigeria. He can never, he can never say no. He can never, he, he, Trump will remain there in four years. The another election, nobody's going to take him out. Exactly. So let's everybody be in mind. So all this thing we are doing, everybody needs to say, oh, if we say protest, come out, protest for your own rights. Thank you, sir. So um, um, let me tell you, LPC, anybody, eh, I think, I thought, I thought that if anybody hear LPC, you will start running, if you, if you start running away, because LPC is more than uh, uh, coronavirus. It's more than... They, that is, they can, LPC can buy you at any time. That's what is happening. Uh, um, sorry, one, one more, just a few minutes. Um, Oti, Oti is a, in fact, it doesn't take any anybody to give his people good governance. He can, he can't go to moon. If you won't go to moon, say, oh, I want to go there. It's, it's you. If you have lesser corruption. There's people that have 100% corruption. There are people that have 10%. Anybody that have 
10 percent corruption can make anything in their in, in his people it doesn't take you anything to do do a good do good thing to your people this this what I, what he's doing governor what he's doing right away i give kudos to him Niger was thank you for so much thank you very much sir. Mr. Shumi, sir. god bless you sir right. thank you you see uh for me i respect honest people a lot that's one thing about my life because i'm a very honest person i'm not a perfect person you know uh because i don't know it doesn't make no sense people are losing their lives right now in this critical situation that you are seeing some lunatics coming out making series of videos we are we are doing our protest eating fish we are doing our protest eating goat meat they are doing our protest you know the Igbo my people will never suffer and you will suffer what are you talking my, about my, my dear watch I th okay, maybe I think I said it sometime. You see, if you look at the quantity of food, or maybe they eat, do they eat that every day? Ordinarily, they just take it. Do they? Do they see to eat every day? It's just making jest of them. I don't like it. That's why. Does it doesn't make it. no it's, sense? It's, it's, it's disgusting. Why should yeah? you even, even to show what? Even yeah. if you are, even if you are drinking only water, I don't like it because I don't. Yeah. I don't see. I don't see the point you are making. Five you know, hours you go we, to the toilet, failing which. You we mean, all are you complaining. We are complaining of division that is affecting the nation. But, but you yourself, you are demonstrating the same thing by coming out to say some set of people now go suffer now. You not go suffer and all that. Whereas you are hypocritically deceiving yourself because you, you, you know if you check it immediately, you off that your 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 satanic video. You you facing the reality again. If you are just driving home, you face the reality by getting a uh, fuel on your car. If you are using public transport, it's the same thing. If you are buying anything, so what's all this uh, 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 thing? All Please, you know, people should tell these people that they are disgracing themselves on social media, making series of videos, you know, doing all sorts of things, mocking other people that are suffering right now. Do you feel have a heart? Yes. I personally, I'm from Edo State. I'm a proud Edo man. I supported Mr. Peter Obi. I worked against uh, 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 Tinubu, but that is not enough for me to come out now to, to be telling the people that is losing their lives now, say, that is good for you, say you die, because we are not listening. No. No. The best I can say is that I, we told you guys, nobody listen. Look where we are today. Simple. Can't be coming out now and be mocking videos everywhere. It's just like to be honest, Nigeria, we are just confused. Now, our skit makers are also making skits, you know, in, 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 taking advantage of all these things, making skits with the situation that is affecting us now. Ah, every day they talk about the government that it's ruled heavy. us before, it's and heavy. one minute, the it's government heavy. that ruled us before, and the government that is still, uh, 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 both the past and present, they are not the only problem that we have. We, the people, we are also the problem of ourselves. I commented a similar statement on the a platform two days ago. I think it was Instablog or Lidaikeji. Everybody were lambasting on me because there was a woman that pushed the police officer down, you know. Then I commented that, yes, the government, uh, uh, the problem we have in Nigeria is not just the government, but also the people. All of us must join here together to have a better country. Trust me, my people, within 10 minutes, I was having more than 400 people that have commented under my, my, my post, or under my com comment. Out of that 400, 700 of them are busting on me, telling me that I'm working for the government. You know, they are telling me and all that. These are the paid people that government is that. So does it mean that everybody will just continue to say what you want to hear? It's the truth. We are also the problem of our country, not just the government. Let's say it how it is. We, it's, it's just something that how can okay. Then I I stated I I put I remember putting it on the comment that if you do that to a police officer in the UK, you know you are going to face some set of uh, uh, penalization and all that. Then they started doing comparison. Do UK police deflate people's tires? Do UK police do this? Do you is that enough for us to justify a citizen pushing a police officer on the uh, uh, on the floor? Ah, I don't know whether I want to see that video. I, I, you know, I don't know whether I'm supposed to see what they talk about. So see the, not my comment, but that particular video. You know, it's crazy. 
Thank you very much, madam. Go ahead. You wanted Mr. to say something? Oh. <clears throat> yes, I, we're talking about uh, the, the scripture writers that are making fun of uh, the whole situation. You know, I, you, you saw the one one I sent to you when they were singing that they're hungry. Imagine. Yes. They use that one sing opera. Uh, that, that, I mean, they are turning the whole thing like it's a joke. It's not a yeah. joke. You can't People turn it to a joke. joke. <laughs> eh? We are doing protests across the country right now. So people are doing protests and dancing and shaking the uh, bum bum, eh? Twerking. Ha! Una wala too much for Nigeria. To be honest, we are not serious. Somebody wanted to say something quickly before I call. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Nigeria, watch. Mr. V, no, no, no. The, the kids, the, yes, the kids we are seeing today, yeah. they, they are even doing doing immoral skits. That's what they are doing. Immoral. <laughs> Stupid kids, that's what they're doing. They're taking the advantage of the country and the the that's exactly. what going to do stupid things to make money. And it's very wrong. Very, I call them I call them criminals, big criminals, all those who are making skis. Immoral Thank skis are doing. Thank you. Uh Black Panther, you wanted to say something as well. Yeah, I wanted to say something. I wanted to I wanted to say that sometime among the disciples, you have Judas among us. So that is that is that is common. Even everywhere is common. It's not is it's common, and they want to normalize it. But mm. when I was going through the internet, too, I also find out some Igbo Igbo group. They came together, and that is in Lagos. They came together. I think I went through the video. They came together and donated money, and all the poor people, the houses, they were on the queue. They started giving them money These for are good breakfast and God lunch. Bless them. They, yeah. they, they were the Igbo market. I bet. I'm going to start you at the last showcase. Uh, I will find that soon. I will send them to you. Uh -uh. It was in Lagos uh -uh. Island. They did it. You see, these are the kind of people we should be talking about. Not all those lunatic trying to mock the people that is losing their lives. Do you know how many people dying every day in Nigeria right now? That you come out making video. We are chopping fish. This is how we do our, 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 our protest. There are some people that you're supposed to trace and arrest them for their stupidity. To be honest, trace them. It'd be like that, that again, I, I don't clear. We're during the time of the uh, scarcity of Naira, where they match Naira and everything, blah, 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 and all that. You know, you, you know how they take drag that girl. She, she's already been sentenced. But sometimes now, come on. No, the, uh, uh, you you see, Andrew, there's nothing like sarcasm here. You know, they shouldn't make any video of sarcasm in this situation. You said that video is being sarcastic. Yes, you know, but they shouldn't. You know, they shouldn't at all. I understand, yes, yeah, they are trying to tell people, okay, we want you people, but not in that way. Not in that manner. Not in that manner. There's time for joke. There's time for seriousness. That is why I'm angry with some people that is protesting. In the video where you are protesting, do, do, do people supposed to even see any kind of smile in your face in this situation? But you see people, they laugh. On. One person, they talk to a, a presenter. you see other people, they laugh for, for background, like say, <laughs> and you want to be taken serious? Anyway, thank you very much, my people. What do I know? Thank you very much, Angie Bright, for that super chat. Yes, you're proving to... Uh, Mr. Eze Shigbo and the Black Panther that, yeah, you live in Texas and your, your super child went through. So, yes, I, maybe, I think it's a personal issue between both of you. It's not because of the region. Because somebody just proved that it's on the screen right now that she's chatted from the same place where you guys lived. But never... Okay, never... okay. Can she tell us or he uh, tell us how she went through? Because uh, it's a serious okay. issue than this side. Okay. Uh, um... Angie Bright, please, if you are still there, uh, just write the process there on the comment section. I'll put it on the screen. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yes, but uh, it's already obvious now that it's not the region. So, yes, if she, if Angie Bright is there, uh, it will put it on the comment section that I'll put it on the screen. You know? Oh, in Dallas. Okay. Yeah, please, you are still there. Please just out <laughs> wait here, happen. Which car you carry go there? Which streets? You carry enter the dollar sign and what was the location and everything. Just put it down in the comment section. God bless you. God bless you. Let's move on. Let me call on the next person so that we can have our final submission right now. 
We're going to have four minutes on our final submission. And then we'll take it from here. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Kisley, please, I'll come to you. Give us a final submission of four minutes. Um, so you guys know that I'm very strict when it comes to final submission. Please, please utilize your time properly. Yeah, Mr. Elvis. Thank yes, you. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all the panelists, the callers, and everyone there. My greetings to everyone once again. Um, I just want to use this opportunity because I know one or two panelists have you know mentioned it, and I want to use this time to kind of re-emphasize it. That is with respect to the constitutional amendment, because we know that this is something that we will talk about every day. We will continue to talk about it. And now this government, these people, they brought out a process. And that process is out there now. So it is only left for us that believe that the current constitution of Nigeria is not working, that it is fraudulent at the least, that we should test them. So that at the end of this process, they will not be at the side where they will ask us to shut up, that we had the opportunity. So let us test the veracity. I stated it yesterday and I said that every opportunity I have, I will say it again. And I know that on this platform, I know that people will talk about the constitution and I will say the same. My response will be the same. Anytime I hear constitution, fraudulent constitution. Let us test the veracity of what they are doing now, this process. I have issues with the 1999 constitution. At least, if you wake me up 3 a.m. in the night, I can tell you at least five five minimum, five issues that I have with that constitution area. And I know the same thing with every one of us. We have issues. So I think we should test it. Let us test them. Those areas that we have issues with, let us highlight them and bring them out. Mr. Elvis on this platform, fortunately, have relationship with Professor Mike Ezekome. Let us employ his services. I put it on this platform today. I will pay for the legal fee of Michael Zekome. Let us employ his services to send the memorandum to the National Assembly on every issue that we have with the Constitution. That is the only way we can test the veracity, those areas that we have. Then if they do not do it, if they end up not doing it, then we know that they are joking. Because if we don't do that, I can tell you, this is the process of the rigging. And there is nothing we can do about it. Because they will tell us, where were you? You had the opportunity to contribute. You did not contribute. You didn't make, they put it out there. Mr. Jonathan, oh, Jonathan one, second. Yes. one second. Yeah. The, this constitution, this constitution, this constitution, constitution has been amended, been amended more than 10, more than 10 times. times. No, the I'm first, the other government other amended, amended, it. amended it. This one now is amending, amending it. No, Mr. 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 Uh, uh, Black Panther, what areas you now, as I know you have so many areas, you have highlighted it, you know, is, is all you have. But what are those specific areas that you know? Test them. No, yes, I know I'm not I testing know, them I'm on anything. Them. I, don't I don't have time, don't to, have test. time to test. Bring, Bring the constitution down, down and let us sit down and talk. Sit down, talk. Oh, okay, so the thing, the thing is that I don't, I don't, you know, for me, I think I think what should be done, what should be done here is to test the veracity of this process that they have there. For example, let me tell you, at least let me mention to because there is no time here. Time is not our friend here. Let me tell you, the electoral process for me, fundamentally, let them amend that constitution that will take the power away from the president to appoint the INEC chairman. Let them take the power away, amend the constitution that will take the power from, away from the president to appoint residence electoral commissioner. At least I can say that. And then we can put it out there. Then if they have the God, let them dare not to amend that section. Because we're starting from somewhere. We can either succeed in doing this, either in a one sweep, in one sweep process, which is what you are calling for, 
throw the old damn thing into the garbage and let us have a new constitution. Or we can achieve it through a piecemeal process. At the end of the day, it is we, we get to our destination. Whether we achieve it in a piecemeal process or we achieve it by dumping the old damn thing into the garbage, either way, we achieve our goal. That's what I think. I might not be right. I'm open to hear other you know, contribution or other, you know, opinion in this in this regard. So, but I just want to say that it will be unfortunate if we find ourselves in a position where they will counter any position you come up with going forward. That where were you? You had the opportunity to contribute. How will you know whether they will do it or not? How? If they, if they concluded this process without adding your own voice to it. At that point in time, come end of 2024, come end of early 2025, and you are talking about constitution, and they have that very sweet. They will put it all out there. They will use propaganda that all the people that are talking now, they had the opportunity. They did not do anything. So how will you counter that? So let's test the veracity. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I think it is the right thing to do. But again, um, you know, people might have different, uh, uh, different opinions. That might even be way, way better than what we're talking about right now so i just want to i just want to say that out there again then uh, that's all i want to uh, i think i've exhausted my time you know in res responding to this so if i have opportunity before the end of the day mr alvis i will say one or two things but let me just uh, you know respect the process now take you know using four minutes mr alvis over to you. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. 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 Jonathan. Mr. Jonathan. Yeah. You don't have another opportunity later. We should be safe. You do have that. <laughs> I said we give for last of you. Mr. Evans. No mind, Jonathan. <laughs> I don't understand, though. The last of you, I talk. He said, if I have another opportunity later. <laughs> Mr. Ives, I better give you 30, 30 seconds. Yes. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Nah, no, just I'll me. I just give one line. One line. One line. Okay, quickly then. You see, Mr. Jonathan, there is what we call no-go area. When you are in a constitution that is that is corrupt, they will give you no-go area. The same thing okay. uh, Buari gave, no-go area. That's the same condition they are going to put on the floor. Because if you are amending, there is what we call no-go area. Thank you. All right. Now, we played a video earlier on of, we suppose, I beg, we, I beg for comment session or the panel, maybe we not think of a name we need to give to Governor Oti. Because the only governor who they put now not make sense. Tomorrow, we'll come up with the name, proper name. We'll take the address before we mention the word Oti. Game changer. Uh, okay, game changer. Uh -huh. That one sounds Go good. Because now, watch this video and see citizens are already celebrating Governor OT for Christ's sake. Governor Obaseki, where you day? Where you day? You are your shameless supporters. Make una see say the citizens are already celebrating. Watch this. Oh, I'm back to the word. <laughs> Light choke. Light choke. But this, but this, this, don't, this thing don't kill business. So no more generator business. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God! See, see, at SC, everywhere just they chill. Everywhere they chill. When two person won't give her less, so it's now we go there enough. Eh? Wait, I go. This light there is just wow. a tutorial me there, tutorial me there. <laughs> Lights, he choke. Oh no, Laria, oh, about that, she, that, she, make gonna come back. You see? You know, no, eh? I'm just feeling somehow right now. You see, Nigerians who worked against Peter Obi because of hatred, look where we are today. Because of your decision, there is every possibility 
that our situation will get worse than this, maybe remain like this or worse than this for the next 40 years again. Just because, you know, normally as a human being, there are some decisions you take about your own life that can cause you pains for the next 10, 20 years. If only, you know, you have a second chance at all. See, Peter Obi, now he carry this man come. See what he they do. Let's assume you people did not allow your selfishness to consume you. We are with for day now for the first 10 months in office. I want everybody to learn from this. Don't because you hate somebody, you want you, you, you just want to end everything about that person. Look where we are today. Whereas me now for my own state, those the where me come from. Obaseki is day day almost eight years. Edo people they get one hour on, and after several hours they still give the another one hour again. Then they get three hours light or two hours light in twenty four hours or sometimes forty eight hours. What a shame! Governor Oti came into power at the same time with Tinubu. Now do the comparison yourself. I, I just this thing just give me good bombs. I, I I'm not happy. No, to be honest, normally I'm supposed to be celebrating right now, but I'm not happy because I'm thinking very deep. Mr. Elvis, Mr. Elvis, bring 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 this brag on. I need more of this this bragging. I I need it. Please let them bring let them bring it on. The uh, people. Mr. Denata, I was to so say it earlier. Can we yeah. do hashtag? Brag your state. Just hashtag brag, oh brag your state. This is so sad. This is so sad. God oh, Mr. Mr. May God give you long life, good heads. Amen. Amen. He said long life and good head because the satanic people we have in Nigeria don't like good things. God forbid none as they they although they plan secretly against this man already. Say, oh, you want I to took him here. Oh. Say, maybe yeah, you know, go walk. You know, go walk. Apart yeah. from saying, no, go walk, Black Panther. See, we know the country we get. I took him here. I will say, I'm going to bear me witness. Make we get security for that place. No, they do. No, they do. Uh -huh. Make we no, not no. Air and land security. I, my my own. Like, I do not own. I do not own. I do not my own that. governor came with a satanic and satanic. Osiomo power plan. Till today, no light for Edo. He can't manage to deceive the people. Go put them for street light. The street light is all of the door, they off now. No, no, technocrat now. Technocrat. Ah, no. Why, 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 <laughs> why, why, why are we wicked like this as a human being? Why? I like don't say your basic is wicked. He's a technocrat. But but just watch this might be you see sometimes so, so, sometimes when you look at the dark side of something, I like Yoruba say from a black pot where you know when near now inside there you go come out white pap. You know, this thing will not be a pointer to anybody, any governor. I know like we are discussing it, so many people will be this because it's if it's possible in Nigeria. It can be possible in Ogun State. It can be possible in Delta. It but can, can I be shock possible you, in Edo. It can, can be possible. So, that, so the Nancy sort of... I well, beg, I just... beg. Uh, Ogasi and Munafi help me with land for that area, I beg. <laughs> I but, don't, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. was rigged was rig twice. was rigged twice. <laughs> uh, the election. No. no uh, my, my he was rigged a serious matter. I beg. Since my name now, I don't already give me shit do. I beg. 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 I know what I call her for my side. You go there, land there, land there, easy to buy for East. Don't you worry, go there. Mr. Elvis, hey, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know, you can pass for land now. You wait and do music for that. You go to the seminar and give you. They go just say, okay, unwind, unwind. I'm very serious, though. 
If you give me land, I go build them. I no, promise. No worry. I'll let you hear you this month. Right. I, go, I go build With them. That's what we then do for you. On why you don't get free land. No, but one thing where we need as a human being for that Nigeria right now, lights. No business can flourish without lights. It's not possible. <laughs> Even to thief self, even to thief eh? self, you know. Like. So now, <laughs> joke, now joke, <laughs> in the comment section, somebody is talking about that land. Just look at the comment section, maybe connect with the person. No, you know, if you okay, know, yes. yes, okay, uh, Friday, yes, Friday, thank you very Friday, much. Thank you. So let's discuss. You so see, about, about but you so know, saying that this light, now, say, now, now this light, or Basan just spend the system, I mean, a bill, billion now, dollar now, 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 permanent light, then they call again for dead now. But remember, say with this now, Abba made go come back to life again. Abba made. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, Let me say one thing. Where go up to Edo State? You see, Edo State then bring uh, this former governor, the tailor, brought this present governor because the present governor they are among the economic team. The person they then bring now, 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 person where they, where they write their account for them. When they were in APC, then they bring now, they send another banker. Some people here will come here and be talking nonsense. If a lot of people don't want, if they know, say they don't want progress, don't give up for life. May they allow APC or PDP enter. They go see what the whole Nigeria never seen before. Hunger go rape them. They never know anything. To be honest, uh, Niger watch. to be honest. Niger watch. Yes, sir. Mr. Niger watch. Yes, sir. You know, I used to tell, the time before the election, people were saying, Many people come to the social media, they say, all politicians are the same. All politicians are the same. I tell them, politicians are not the same. They say, oh, you came from a PDP, this, that. I say, they're not the same. This old Tina, he was a member of a PDP before, I think. Yeah, he was a member. Yeah. You see? To be honest, to be honest, uh, game changer, Governor Oti, we just want to say thank you. Ah, thank you. You don't make me regret supporting Labour Party. You have done well in Nigeria. No, no. Hold in on, recent times, no. Hold so on, thank you. Let them thank you, Mr. bring Consign. this man. Put that man. That man will follow the footsteps of. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let me quickly say this: When you see things like this, then you start to think back and reflect on your. Decision. Unaway said no over your dead body. You not go let Ibo man rule over your dead body. Peter Obi not go feel rule. Look where we are today. I will say this is selective. Now say okay, this suffer, this suffering now. Now the people we we work against so 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 like this. Now they go suffer. But no, they can't go. They put people like me in jail. Now suffer. Eh? Then they put people away. It's so sad. Because we were there abroad. Now, when I saw for one of the Nigeria, they affect us. So if we they, if they spend 20,000 or 30,000 or 50,000 to people for Nigeria before, we are not even spending more. So it's affecting us. Let's continue with our final submission because someone look this in there and not come on for here. Let me no, call. Worry, no, uh, no, no worry, Niger Watch. Everybody, this thing will be replicated in most states now within the next five years. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being I'm quite positive. Five years. Five years too long. No, I said, in mo, I said many states more. now. Just, you can, no, they can't start the same time. It can be done between now and next year. But no, 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 no I said in, in, ah. in many states. In many states. But that's what we, I'm As saying. we give credence to uh, Alice OT, please, let's not forget Madam, Madam Nena OT. Yes, now, the yeah. woman, now, that woman, I, w na, na, I restore a uh, Ale, uh, uh, governor Alessotti now. Now she be the uh, res ah. uh, INEC residential uh, commissioner mm -hmm. now for that state that they took to Abuja. They gave her money. She said no. Okay. That the God in her and the woman in her will not allow her to collect bribe. Thank you, man. Now you see what you see the difference between and and then uh, and then uh, Mahmoud Yakub now. Okay, okay, see, okay, see, I do eight years. One, okay. one fly one fly over one bridge <laughs> thank you thank you everybody um let me call on the next person to give us a final submission uh, you know uh, um uh, let me call 
Uh, Ogak, uh, uh, CM, just give me your final submission. Four minutes. Okay. Um, well, I think I have to... Let me say this because it's been trending. One, let me appeal to Ndibo. The people that are just... Maybe when you borrow money as a maybe apprentice, you tell somebody, hold phone. Oh, yeah, they video me. That's so with the chopper. Man, on this one. It's, it's too pedestrian. It's just too childish. There's no point in doing it. What I expect you to do is you go to the street and say, look, or without even knowing, bring back, bring, bring money for a bag of rice. Maybe five of you, one bag of rice with uh, some, um, some uh, whatever condiments to prepare it. Give it to one woman, say, madam, whoever comes here, serve them a plate of rice. Just do it like mini. That is better. With all this coming to... Um, um, for social media, showing people you are eating meat. Ordinarily, I know you don't eat it like that every day because there's no money. Uh -huh. So you know it's like you are in Okada or you are in your car. You say I bought petrol. You know, feed buy. That's if you don't want to join the protest. Fair enough, stay quietly, go your way. But coming to taunt people, it doesn't mean anything. Probably may take it as I don't think being a humility is strength. Humility is not weakness. That you want to be humble because of what people are going through, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that you are weak. Rather, it makes you strong. All you are even trying to tell people is that okay, when you eat meat, and so what? So quit me because somebody said it. Does it? Do you know what will happen? It's a shame, really. I have condemned it in one on one somewhere else, you know, because just because he came up again to this evening. It's quite uh, unbecoming. I don't think people do something like that. P2B is busy going to refugee camp in a Benue state, supplying food stuff. On Christmas Day, was it uh, 2022? He spent it in the refugee camp. I remember what he said. He told them, I should have been in... If you, if, if you people are not here, I would have been in my house. But because you are here, I have to be here with you. So something like that is not uh, that you help somebody. If in fact the high, the slight, the um, the this the what is it called? The lowest form of assistance you can give to somebody is to give the person a glass of water or food. That is the lowest you could give. Oh, you see somebody who is hungry. Okay, come and join me. Let's eat. It's normal. <clears throat> it's a tradition. We do it in Africa. If in Nigeria, oh boy, they eat. You join me. We do it. So why should you not come out and say because of no? I don't like that. It doesn't say good of any anybody doing it. But thank God those doing it are in the minority. It just work for few people that are this, you know, misguided coming to come and pose that you eating. You no, know, I don't even. In fact, it tells me the level of how intelligent that person is, and I don't I don't reckon with it, such people. Therefore, you should stop because this is not what it's meant for. If you want, if you are eating, what if somebody comes and say, "Can I join you?" You will, will you tell the person no? You will have to tell the person, "Join me." It's food. The next five hours you have to find the toilet or six hours. If you didn't go to the toilet the next day, you are in trouble. So why are you making food? Food is not something you use to make an enmity. If you prepare food, you give to the people. So that I don't see the need. Let that stop. And I hope people listening to us, it makes no meaning. Rather do it quietly give people food let them eat even if you give like government sharing bag of rice hi even if you're eating rice every day in a family maybe one more oh, that's him yes please. see see one of the year people what they tell you just now see yeah. watch them see them you know whether whether i go okay no no the video did not play go ahead i'll play it before mm. you finish okay okay yeah so so you know when you see i've even i've seen some you just they say put one uh, beer here put all the what is the meaning of all those Sometimes even the feed, the what you think you are enjoying, you are even bringing disease or one type of uh, disorder to yourself because you never know. So I don't really. When I I've seen all those things, but uh, as a person, it tells you the level of uh, intelligence, how uh, their IQ level of IQ is. I'm glad they are the minority. People should not do it anymore. Rather, use that money prepare. Maybe even if it's a kilo of rice, go to a woman and say, "Say, madam, can you prepare one kilo of rice for me? How much?" It will charge you. You pay the money, come and carry it, say, or keep it here. Give to anybody that wants. I read about some, I think this is the time to do it. I read one book in which they said that somebody went to a beer parlor 
after drinking, he deposited money. Say in case somebody come in, who does I mean not not a beer parlor, sorry, in a tea shop. Say that if anybody comes and they ask him for a cup of tea or whatever, just give. I've paid for whoever that we come. So if you come there and they give you a free cup of tea, say who paid for it? Say somebody paid. Do you know the person? No. You the person that is benefiting. You do not know the person who who paid for it. And the person who paid for it did not know you who benefited. So that is pure watch this. Humanity. Watch this. That is pure humanity. We are protesting. The Igbos are protesting. We are protesting. You can see all the Igbos. We are protesting. You can see the Igbos. We are protesting. We are protesting. See the Igbos. We are protesting. You can see. We are all protesting. This is how we are all protest. This is how we are all protest with the Igbos. You can see how we do our own protest. We are protesting. Yes, yes, yes. Well, see the Igbos. We are protesting. You can see. We are all protesting. Okay, okay. After after this eating this now, because you overfeed yourself, you must go to the toilet. It's purely a pure human uh, metabolism. Yes, you have to go to the toilet and you come out. What does that mean? Okay, he's even eating the he's even eating the bone. It doesn't mean I don't see I don't see any stupidity. Even even those even if even if, even if I'm hungry, I see this. I will even consider myself of higher intelligent quotient than this person. So what does that mean? This is not just the only video. There are series of videos on social media coming people, from people you know will, what? people will do it and then start to fool themselves. Thank God, like somebody said, I've had somebody who said in Lagos, even in my street. At your quarter, somebody was telling me, said they are planning to do something like a mass feeding. Some group of people somewhere around that go area of Lagos <clears throat> said they, he said they want to, they want to do it. But they, I told the person, said just look for any any woman who is in a restaurant. Say, madam, can you give you a contract? Cook this one bag of rice for us. We are coming tomorrow. Just tell people anywhere you are, please gather. We eat it and go. They could be do just like a party, food party, street party. That's what you do. Then you receive the blessing. What's right. the meaning of this? These are Thank dirty you. people doing all this rubbish. I beg. Thank you, Augustine. Right. Thank you very much for putting your voice out there on this particular one. Thank you. All right. Um, give us a mandate, please. Give us your final submission. Four minutes. I think it's uh, me. No, no, no. I'll come to you, sir. Hold on. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Elvis. Um, appreciate the time today. Um, so, uh, Dr. Al, I mean, Alex Oti, I think he's, he's a doctor. Yeah, he has a doctor. I think he has a doctor uh, attached to his name. Um, then the woman also, that was the INEC uh, presidential uh, commissioner during the election. So this is the good that people enjoy when others stand tall to do their jobs. The reason why the country is where it is today is because one, the president in court, the Senate president, the Speaker of the House, the Naval Air Force, Army chiefs, and other people are not doing their jobs. And that's why the country is where it is today. You have legislators, both in the upper chamber and lower chamber, not doing their job. Some days ago, you showed a video after two kings were pied in the southwest region of the country, and one of the arrests was cried in, on, in the floor of the house. Ever since that cry, have you guys heard back from that rep member of the, of the floor on what they are going to do to protect their people in the Kitty State? No. And Mr. Jonathan said it that day. That tears was a, was a crocodile tears because of what they are not doing their jobs. Nena Oti did a job, even stood in front of maybe I can say death because everything she was flown she was flown to Abuja because of Abia State, and she said after it all that the woman in her and the God in her will not allow her to rig the election of Abia State. Compare that to Kogi State, where you now have the office of the former state governor. Compare that to Bayesa, 
compare that to river states, you can see the difference. If people would do their job right with honesty, as is enshrined in our national anthem and the pledge, the country will get better. Nena Oti stood in front of Nigerian flag and did a job by making sure that Alex Oti was not rigged out in the last election like it, like it has been done to him in previous election. This is not the first time Alex Oti was coming out. But it just shows that that man has a dream and he has a focus. Maybe by now, Habia State would have become the economic orb of the country. Should they have allowed him some years when he was rigged out? A vision, a dream may be delayed. A passion, a purpose may be delayed if it is backed up by divinity and by truth and honesty. It will deliver regardless of how long it takes. Look at what is happening in Anambra State. Peter Gregory was formerly a governor of Anambra State. Just some days ago, we saw building collapse in Anambra State. Shops being built by the governor. If everybody do their jobs, the country will get better. What Alex Oti is a call to the governor's forum, is a call to the executives, is a call to the judiciary, is a call to the legislator. Do your damn job. Nigerians gave you their collective will. They gave you their collective power to go and represent them. But today, you unleash hunger on common Nigerians. The power that you have today as a president, in quotes, as a Senate president, as a Speaker of the House of Red, or a floor member, a senator, wherever you are, the power you have today was given to you by the people, and they can take it back from you if they so wish to do. Everybody, do your goddamn job and save the country. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. Um, the competition is real. You know, we appreciate uh, Governor Oti for the uh, what he's doing. Then, Governor Oti left this one, you know, because I just saw this one right now. Uh, let me quickly put this on screen if I call on the next person. And if this is real and it can keep to it, I'll be very happy. I'm a billionaire. My sons are billionaires. I have three children. No godfather brought me into power. Abia money will go into Abia. I'm looking to compete with Dubai not Lagos, Governor Alex Oti reveals. I'm willing to compete with Dubai while Edo State this man. On a way, they clap, they follow Obaseki. Anyway, sir, let's move on. Thank you very much, my people. Let me call on uh, Mr. Consign, your four minutes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead, four minutes. Uh, happy New Year. Um... You see, Mr. Mr. Service, I, if people send you those kind of, uh, I suggest those kind of uh, useless kits that are making in Nigeria, some of them are kits that are making in, in Nigeria. Don't, don't, be, I don't, don't be watching them because it's foolish people. You see, anybody who's doing such thing, I'm, I'm eating up. Those people are very poor. They are poor. Ibos are, is, is, how many boats are there that are celebrating with them? It's just poverty. Those people are very, very poor. On the issue of the constitution, that the constitution, those people who are going to make this constitution, are they, uh, how, how did they come into the government? Did they already get their vote, they come into the government? That's the problem. This would attend the constitution. Are they really, how did they come into that place to become uh, members of the Senate and so on and so forth? So somebody has said it before in the, I, I, I think, uh, rise and so on and so forth. You see? So they didn't, most of them didn't win the election. So this is Ill illegal people coming to make illegal illegal constitution. You see, the constitution is illegal, and those who are, uh, are the, what is that? The Senate president, how did he come in there? The man who didn't contest for this, Senate, they, they, he fell and they, they put him there. That will be useless the Supreme Court to put him there. So that's the problem. So any constitution that I make and so it will be it will still be illegal. 
And the, this constitution that who people are, are more majority there. So it's still going to be the, or the, still the status quo with the men. There's nothing going to change there. And for, for, for me, the country, if the country want to go forward, yeah, network. it's cutting. Mr. Consign, your network is breaking. Okay, you just left. Okay, let me move on to the next person uh, quickly. Uh, Black Panther, please, your four minutes, final submission. Thank you. Hello, thank you, Mr. Najawash. Thank you very much. I will, I will conclude that, Mr. Consign, by what you wanted to see. You see, my people, any constitutional amendment that got to be done by these people is going to be is going to be false. They cannot be the one to amend our constitution because most of them, the illegality in them is bigger than the Atlantic Ocean. What we need now is for the constitution to be dropped by the president and let us now, if they want to go that route, if they don't want to go that route, let us start from the foundation which GEJ gave to us. Spent over 10 billion naira for that. Let us, let us drop that book, bring it, and let it go into, go into the various states in Nigeria and the referendum will be taken, and it will be what generally accepted. And from there, we can start to amend what the people, the people of the country have ascended to. We can now amend the people's constitution. This constitution presently is not the people's constitution. From the first page of the of the, of the constitution, this 99 constitution, it said with the people. That is illegal. There was nowhere in Nigeria that we have sat down to write a constitution for our dear nation. So anything on the first ground, there is no amount of amendment that will expunge illegality that have been enshrined into that constitution. There is none. You cannot, you cannot give a thief, and a thief will come to you and say, this key don't lose. Are thieves. They have stolen the wealth of the nation. They have stolen everything about Nigeria. They have made Nigeria a mockery in the entire universe. That's how I do stay. They have just played us 419 in the local language. He said he, did, he built a power station. The power I do stay, some part of Edo State. Presently, what is the result sheet? A technocrat that have been that they learn from the book of, of of illegality. That is who he is. He's not a technocrat. He's just a common politician that have learned on how to steal the commonwealth of the people. That is it. That is the school he went to. You want to talk about academic standard? You and I, our academic record is far more better than that man in the state. The governor. How many credits does he have? Two credits. He's going to the University of Ibadan. Is that the standard you and I use? To get into the university. So what are we talking? He says he he's not a technocrat. He just went to the school where he was taught on how to play Nigerian politics, where the commonwealth of our nation is being stolen. And now he was in the economic team. Of the senator, former governor of Edo State. Now, he has gone back to you give are, the you are going in and out, Black Panther. You are going in and out. Now. He has gone back now to give an award to the former governor who he fought with. And now the former governor who he fought with has brought his son, who was a gatekeeper in APC. And now it's now being selected to come and represent a PDP in as a gubernatorial aspirant. My people, 
I am all out for the Labour Party aspirant. I am all out for him. He has a credit gift. He has a record. He is former NBA, NBA president. And that is a light on the tunnel for the Edo people. Edo people be wise. Let us check a new party called Labour Party. It has been shown in Abia State. A replica of All it right. can be done in Edo State. Thank you very much, Mr. Nigel. May God bless every every follower of Ninja Watch, and may God bless Ninja Watch and his family in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You too. God bless you too, my brother. I appreciate you. Uh, is it you, Bosa? If you are still there with us, uh, give us your final submission. Four minutes. Okay, you are not there right now, uh, Madam Patricia. I don't know if you are there as well. I'm here, oh, Mr. Evis. Okay, your Thank voice you, is sir. very clear. Okay, give us uh, give us four minutes uh, final submission. Thank you. I don't know if I will use four minutes, but um, yeah, I will um, endeavor to to do so. Um, the constitution. I will still talk about. You know, I'm also the proponent of uh, uh, clamor, those are more clamoring for the constitution to be trashed and the new one um, uh, written. And like Black Panther was saying, I'm of the opinion that yes, the new constitution should be written by every tribe. They should uh, go around gets every tribe to be represented that's what it is because you cannot build you cannot continue to build on the or build on the faulty foundation the foundation to which that uh, fraudulent constitution is standing was faulty from the beginning so whether they amend it to it doesn't matter how many times they try to amend it it can never be right because we cannot shave somebody's head on, uh, on their absence. That's what they have done with that constitution. So if you like, you keep amending it. When they are amending it now, it's not just those people sitting in those uh, lawmakers, they say they are amending it. Lawmakers, they are not speaking for the people. We come to know that. They're not speaking for the, uh, the people that elected them. They are speaking for themselves. And even this around say uh, white people, when they talk so now safe, you know, it's still going to be for whatever uh, amendment they are doing now, they are going to also leave loopholes in it so that they can also find a way to continue to uh, keep the status quo. So it wouldn't make any sense. If there's going to be any solution, the constitution has to be scrapped because the constitution is what, uh, is, is what brought us to where we are now because the constitution was faulty. And in that same constitution, that's where you have the literal law as well, that uh, that gives a, a, a room for INEC to suddenly leave a, leave a electronic a, a results a collect, a, a collect, co collection to writing a, to going to manual, and they're using TPEX and the, and the, and the pe paper and pen to correct a, a, the ballot papers. So what is 40 is 40 so we they need we need to we need to trash that thing because that is the where the whole problem started from and that's my take so i will i would then um, i'm not Thank i'm you. not for those trying to uh, um augment all this uh, white paper or say you or the constitution no 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 or uh, totally both of them should be trashed and let a new one be um, reaching that include every every tribe. Thank you, Tyrese. Thank you, Mother Patricia. God bless you, man. Thank you. All right, everybody on the panel, I'll give you their submission. Only two Nigerian on there available today. He joined us on the panel, but it's not available. All right. Uh, but uh, but sorry, the... Mr. Evis. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me, I just can I just respond to Black Panther and also to quickly, Madam Patricia. Quickly. Yeah, thank you. You only have so one minute. Have one minute. Thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. I appreciate that. I've not actually I've not really, you know, had any superior position with respect to what they are trying to do. The that is the Senate and the House of Assembly. 
Yes, it is. The constitution is criminal. But what they are doing right now is a process that gives you as a Nigerian, gives, gives me as a Nigerian, the opportunity to state our grievances in an official manner. What we're doing here is not official. We are only, we believe that they are listening to us, they are hearing us, but we, you and I now have the opportunity to put all these griev grievances out there in an official matter, manner, that in fact, it will be gazetted. Whatever you contributed will be gazetted. Future generations will read it. They can't throw it into the trash. So we need, for me, I believe we need to do that. That is as our civic, as our responsibility as a citizen to put our position out there in an official manner. And that is what this process is about now. Whether they now, you know, implement it or not is another thing. But we now have the opportunity to put all of our grievances, everything pertaining to that constitution that we don't want, we need to put it out there. And I think it, I believe that it is the right thing to do. Thank we you. have the opportunity now. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Thanks to everyone. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you very much, everybody on this panel and everyone that joined us today. Thank you so much. I'd like to appreciate you all, Mr. Jonathan, Augustian, uh, Mr. Give Us a Mandate, uh, Mr. Black Panther, Madam Patricia, and uh, Mr. Eze Shigbo. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Oga Consign, thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you that joined the panel today. And uh, only one call came in today from, uh, you know, our brother right there. So, yes, tomorrow, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, uh, the, phones, the phone will be properly uh, set for the broadcast. I appreciate every one of you, my people. Now, God, God bless you now. And uh, those of you that supported the channel today, may God bless you all, starting with Adela Jaogumbi, uh, Nosahai, uh, Mr. Johnson, Emmanuel, Angie Bright, and Peggy Modi. May God bless you all, my people. I appreciate you all. Thank you very much for the support. I'm very, very grateful. Continue to support the channel. Continue to encourage what we are doing here. Support by, you know, with any how you know you can support. You can support us financially. You can support us by sharing our videos. You can support us by liking our videos. You can support us by any how you know you want to do it. Put your effort in there. Put your, you know, your voice out there for us to have a better Nigeria in our time. I appreciate you all, my wonderful people, my people right down in the comment section, mother of all my midaspira. Thank you very much, mommy. Thanks always, always, always. Thank you very much, Peggy Mondi. Com uh, comfort, baby. I can see you. Ray Aboa, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Okena. Thank you, Michael Ganemaro Gawanlele. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, all my people. Thank you, Tony Africa, Chidima. Thank you. Thank you, Oga Pansat. Thank you, all my people. Right down the comment section. And God, and God bless you, all my people. Thank you so much. Uh, Abo Azi, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you for all you do my people now here now go draw the curtain it's been a long day i appreciate every one of you we miss madame luke today you know but yes she still deserves to rest you know easy you know it's you know, easy to be here every day you know we that is doing it coming out every day is not easy for us that's why we normally say that we need encouragement always and you all are doing that may god bless you all thank you very much uh, my wonderful people uh let's continue to stand for what is right uh, fingers crossed, we'll have a better Nigeria in our time. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much, Governor Oti, for what you are currently doing. Please, the same amount that we are using to praise you, don't do anything that will make people to now use that same amount to criticize you. Please continue to stand out. Continue to at least, you know, put every past and present government, put all of them to shame that, yes, Nigeria can be fixed. Thank you very much. Now, God, God bless you now. Thank you, God, Chris. I can see you just coming in now. And God, God bless you, sir. You came in late. But nevertheless, I appreciate you. I appreciate every one of you right there, my wonderful people. Please allow us so that we can end the show right now. I'll play this music for my people who supported us today. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.